So hello everyone, welcome to this uh, fun interview slash chat with uh, Chris Heatherly, aka Spike Hike. Hello Chris. Hi. How have you been? How's your day been? Good, good. Just getting started. All right, that's great. So Chris, um, many of the players of Club Penguin know you too well as Spike Hike. However, um, as I found out whenever I was asking for questions for you for this interview, most of the people don't remember um, how long you've spent at Club Penguin. So if you could go ahead, give us an introduction of yourself. What positions did you hold? Which year to which year? Please feel free. Yeah. So I was. In Two thousand eight, and I met Lane around that time um, because I was running Disney's toy business, or I was running a part of Disney's toy business. Then ultimately ran Disney's whole toy business, mm. um, and uh, and so I went up to Club Penguin. One of the first people to go up to Kelowna after we acquired the company, after like Bob Iger and those people had gone up. So um, I went up there to work with them on the toy line and. Mm -hmm. Lane and I really hit it off uh, in particular. I mean, I love the whole team, but my background had been from Silicon Valley and building software and and um, applications and, and doing a lot of innovation stuff. And so, you know, Lane and I were kind of kindred spirits and um, hit it off really strongly. And so we did that initial Club Penguin toy line. Mm -hmm. It was very successful. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things to come out of that was card jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> Which Lance came up with for the the tops card line, mm -hmm. and then um, so I worked with them um, on that side from like 2008 or nine until 2011, and then uh, and then by 2011 I came over to um, to head up production for for uh, all the virtual worlds that were now underlaying because he had. Uh, Club Penguin, Toontown, uh, Pixie Hollow, mm -hmm. um, uh, and originally I was supposed to put most my focus on LA, um, the LA studios, because they had just done a bunch of layoffs, not all those on my worlds were working, so I was going to focus more on LA, and he was mm -hmm. going to focus on more on Kelowna, and then uh, very quickly it became clear that like Club Penguin also needed a lot of focus and you know it was our biggest business and so um i wound up getting much more involved in penguin and um kind of progressively throughout that year and then uh when lane left in uh let's see i came on like 2011 mm -hmm. summer of 2011 and then uh lane left something like 2013 mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And when he left, then I wound up taking over as general manager of Club Penguin mm -hmm. and ran that. That was my, I mean, major focus for another, you know, two or three years. And then, then I wound up running all of Disney Mobile Games, mm -hmm. um, all of the, like, what was left of the Playtime acquisition. Um, so I had, at that point, five studios. Uh, not just Penguin, but I had uh, I had I had a studio in Seattle, a studio in uh, Palo Alto, um, one here in Burbank, uh, San Diego. We had a tech stu well, we had a tech studio and we had a game studio, mm -hmm. and then we had a bunch of external developers. So by then, I was running a pretty big, pretty big business. I mean, it was four hundred people, um, and so I wasn't able to put as much focus on Penguin, although I was still involved mm -hmm. um and then i left in 2016 yep so uh, basically mm -hmm. like 2011 to 2016 most intensely probably 2011 to 20 to 20 like 14 mm -hmm. and then yeah probably 2014 and then and then uh you know and then going back as far as 2008 all right that's really cool and I personally am one of those people who started getting really into the game from 2012 onwards. So almost 
since you started taking over and personally I really loved all of the features that we had like the takeovers, Star Wars, Marvel, the Club Penguin app, Push, Karjutsu Snow so I'm really excited for this interview based on that personal history that I have um, so speaking yeah. So speaking of which, I've mentioned the app, and you've told us that you stayed with Club Penguin uh, up till 2014, but also you continued as part of Club Penguin up to 2016, but as a bigger uh, head. So could you give us uh, a rundown of uh, Club Penguin Island? What was the story behind Island? What was the history there? Why did you guys think it's the best idea to go with that road, etc.? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you have to back all the way up to the beginning. So I'll, I'll kind of tell the history of Club Penguin technology and mm-hmm. that gets the island. So um, Club Penguin was built on Flash, as everybody knows. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, and you know, really, what the Club Penguin studio was was it was a bunch of artists and animators who were also able to, you know, the the magic of the early Club Penguin was that Flash enabled these artists to get in and make some gameplay mm-hmm. with minimal coding skills, right? Yep. And so they were able to build this thing from the beginning. And Lance was a technical genius who was able, you know, he was the first guy that we really know of. I mean, maybe someone else had done this, but he was the first guy to kind of make <laughs> an online multiplayer world with with Flash. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, sort of figure out how to do that, and um, but it was never like fully baked technology. I guess is what I would say. Like it worked, but it wasn't like it wasn't secure. It wasn't. You know, there were mm-hmm. a lot of other things that kind of bit us as we scaled. But um, but kind of early on, the magic was you could have these artists and you know artists slash designers working in 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 Flash and making the gameplay themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Then, um, you know, by the time I came on to Penguin, like, we were having significant technology problems. Like, the site was crashing all the time. Mm -hmm. You would get up to, you know, we would get up to, like, you know, I mean... Was that in 2013 or 2011, this point in time? Oh, by, by 2011. Okay. So... You know, we would get up to like 200,000 concurrence or something like that, mm-hmm. and the site would just would just crash. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it just didn't scale, and I, and 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 people may remember that like the site crashed all the time, <laughs> out all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had, and it was just really buggy. And part of the reason that it was buggy is it was written in ActionScript 2, mm-hmm. which was not object oriented so it wasn't like a real programming language it was like a very basic scripting language mm-hmm. and you and every page was its own app is kind of the way to think about it so um there were a few persistent things like login persisted across the pages mm-hmm. but once you were logged in like all the all each page was its own program Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and so what that meant was it was very difficult to make any to maintain Club Penguin because at that point Club Penguin had become you know hundreds of Flash pages each, which was its own program. Yep, each mm-hmm. with different versions of you know uh, you know each with different versions of like technology of back-end mm-hmm. technology that it spoke to mm-hmm. at, at not always perfectly right mm-hmm. so um, there was a clean there was a technology overhaul that had to happen because the site just couldn't like we, we were starting to have a problem where we couldn't we couldn't grow the business we couldn't accommodate all the kids who were coming in mm-hmm. because the technology just didn't scale mm-hmm. so then that was a big debate and Club, part of Club Penguin was built in, in Action Script three, which was object oriented. Part of it was built in, in Action Script two, and there was a there was at one point a plan to take Club Penguin and basically rewrite it into Action Script three, um, but that was like going to be a like eight. I mean, we were told it was going to be like an eighteen month, two year project, and. You know, everyone could see that Flash was going to go away at some point because Steve Jobs had written this 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 um, this famous note about 
um, Flash basically being the buggiest thing on, <laughs> on Apple platforms. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, basically saying Flash is dead and I'm going to kill it. <laughs> and so, uh, and I, I forget what year it was, but it was pretty clear that, like, Flash was just buggy, yeah. insecure, getting hacked, all these other problems. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to make an investment, 18 months or the two year investment into Flash, you know, and then have to do it again just seemed like, you know, seemed, seemed really risky. Mm -hmm. But at that point, Unity wasn't that far along either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just, I, before we got on the call, I was looking at the history of Unity uh, just to remind myself. And like, it, it really, you know, Unity developed a lot from like 2011 to 2015. Like 2015, mm -hmm. I think, is when Unity 3.0 came out, mm -hmm. and and Unity's whole focus switched from, you know, trying to be like a 3D Flash replacement to being mobile, right? Mm -hmm. Because the whole industry went mobile. Yep. In uh, in in around 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. So, um, you but Unity wasn't, you know, we looked at Unity as a solution, but all of our engineers kind of felt that it wasn't ready. Now, I think in retrospect that was probably the wrong call, but you know, hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, there was a bias internally amongst some of the engineers towards wanting to build their own tech. Okay. Um, and that was also always a big persistent problem because, remember I said Club Penguin was um, Club Penguin was, you know, originally built by designers and artists who were able to code, mm -hmm. but they weren't really engineers. Yep. There were some engineers, but there weren't a lot of engineers. Mm -hmm. Kelowna was a very hard place to recruit heavy engineering talent to, and over time, the tech problems that we started to have were, um, you know, required much heavier engineering uh, uh, capability, and we just couldn't hire people in Kelowna because it was so... Uh, you know, kind of, I mean, it's a vacation, uh, you know, destination. It's a yeah. beautiful place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you go to work in Kelowna and then for whatever reason you lose your job, there's no other tech company yeah. mm -hmm. there. So you have to move, right? So yep. a, lot of, a lot of people, you know, if you're in Seattle and you can work for one of, you know, hundreds of tech companies, like why would you, why would you move? <laughs> so then we got into having to have other tech studios start to work on Penguin. We had a Seattle studio at one point. We had a uh, San Diego studio. And then that started to fragment kind of the, the I would say kind of like the, the team mentality around, you know, what, what you're building. Not to say that people didn't try, but mm -hmm. but it's just, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of keep a vision around what Club Penguin is mm -hmm. when everyone's in the office in Kelowna yeah. and there was a certain culture to that studio mm -hmm. and now you've got these very different cultures in other mm -hmm. places that you're fully dependent on mm -hmm. and it changed the dynamic from being one of um you know like artist-led creative-led to being like heavily technology dominated mm -hmm. and the artists and um animators those people weren't able to make gameplay anymore they had to rely on engineers so it just it changed the entire dy dynamic of how Club Penguin was made. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, we knew Flash was a burning platform. Mm -hmm. We knew that you know we were you know we were told Unity was not the solution. Our engineers wanted to build their own engine, um, and then uh, Disney had bought this company called Playdom that was a big social games company that had a lot of games in Flash. And they were pushing this platform called MetaPlace, and MetaPlace was this big um, uh, virtual world platform that I think was very ahead of its time, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and MetaPlace basically was a fully server-side platform that, the best way I could put it is that with with with, with Club Penguin, with original Club Penguin, because it was Flash, all the gameplay happened in the browser, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then and then and then the 
the game would talk to back-end services like the database, right, or login service um, to get information. But basically everything was kind of happening in that browser. Mm. The problem with that is it's very hackable, right? Because yep. what you can do is because, especially in Flash, which you can decompile, <laughs> yep. um, you know, you could decompile it and get in there and figure out ways to exploit it. And this became the big problem for us security-wise because there was there's just no way to secure Flash. Mm -hmm. That's ultimately why Apple shut it down was because it was creating all of these exploits. People were using it to hack in the low levels of the operating system and steal stuff and take over people's computers and all these you know take their credit cards and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So and there was just no there was just no way there was no solution to that problem. Right? It was mm -hmm. just inherent in Flash. MetaPlace was kind of all the way in the other direction which is to say that the client was literally just art and it was puppeteered by the server so that so you know if you wanted a penguin to go from here to there mm -hmm. on the screen yep and you you know clicked with your mouse go over here a message would be sent to the server to say move the penguin from here to there then back then 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 the server would take the art asset and move it, right? Yep. <laughs> and so, and so there was nothing on the almost nothing on the front of it. Mm -hmm. um, and this made it very hard to do, almost impossible to do, like any kind of Twitch gameplay or anything that, like you know, there were certain games that relied on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this led to a bunch of problems that I that I bring up. But anyway, so Metaplay, we were kind of, you know, told you should use MetaPlace, and at that time, Playdom was going to go on to MetaPlace, they were going to build all their games on MetaPlace, everyone was going to use MetaPlace. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I remember when I first came on to Penguin in 2011, as the head of production, and I'm sitting in the, uh, I remember they had given me a temporary <laughs> office, and, and so I remember... I had all my boxes around me. Like I had all these toys from the because I'd run the toy business, right? Yeah. So I had toys like stacked, you know, mm -hmm. you know, up to the rafters, literally. I mean, just around me. And because I was waiting on this other office to <laughs> over to it. So I remember I'm sitting in that office, and Paul, who was the head of Pack at the time, mm -hmm. called me and said, "I don't think that um, the current tech approach. I've been digging in, into this for months." We've been building a prototype of trying to figure out how to do this action script three thing. He was like, they had come up with some way to like, they were trying to find a way to take action script code and turn it into uh, like C++ code for mobile. Like it was crazy, you know, what they were trying to do. It was like a alchemy. And he was like, this approach isn't going to work. We got to do something else. I think we need to build Club, rebuild Club Penguin on MetaPlace. Mm -hmm. And and I'm a pretty, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm a very reactive guy, you know, like I I try not to act up too much, but I, I mean, I, I, I freaked out because I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, Paul, I, you know, I've been here like two months and like, I barely know where the bathroom is. <laughs> And you're telling me, I've been up to Kelowna maybe twice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you're telling me that um, we have to do a fundamental overhaul mm -hmm. of this thing. Um. Or, or, you know, and, and we have to rebuild it. And it's going to be it's gonna be multiple millions of dollars. And I was yeah. like, if you're wrong, if you're wrong, this, like Club Penguin goes away. I mm -hmm. was like, this is... Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I have no real way to validate this. Like, I just have to trust, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we had the conversation with Lane, which was kind of the same level. Of, you, know, <laughs> you know, we all freaked out. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we didn't, we weren't being presented a lot of like, there was no easy solution. Mm -hmm. So we decided, okay, well, we'll, we'll start, you know, we'll start down this path with MetaPlace. And that just became a far bigger endeavor than I think any of us ever. It was cracked up to us to be a lot easier than it was, um, and it took a lot longer and and cost a lot more. And and ultimately, 
you know, part of the problem was once we took the dependency on MetaPlace, that was built by the San Diego studio. And mm -hmm. the San Diego studio had, you know, like 30 people in it. And they were the highest paid engineers in the company. And so you go from this model where Club Penguin had been built by these really low cost artists. <laughs> yeah. In, right in Kelowna, Canada, which, which, which at mm -hmm. that time was a really cheap place. Mm -hmm. um, and literally it cost 50 cents on the dollar. Plus we got uh, credits from the Canadian government. That was the other <laughs> so it cost like 50 cents on the dollar for every head we had in the building mm -hmm. to be in Kelowna. Now you've got these some like you've got Facebook level engineers who are paid top of the market in San Diego, which is one of the most expensive real estate markets in America, um, and you're completely dependent on these guys, and they're you know literally half a continent away, <laughs> um, and they're smart guys, some of the best engineers I've ever worked with, but um, but it was a culture clash for sure, mm -hmm. right? yeah. And I think, you know, one of the big lessons that I learned as a game maker during that time is there was a bias from all these. When we bought Playdom, we had brought in all of these, like, engineering-type people. And they all had a bias <coughs> towards, and who wouldn't, towards, like, big-brain engineering types, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if there was a question about what to do, we deferred to, you know, the smart, like, the smartest person in the room, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... The problem was at one point with this whole Metaplay saga, and I'll spare you a lot of the pain. <laughs> like, you know. But at one point, I had this really great engineering lead in LA who was working on the Penguin client, mm -hmm. um, working on getting Penguin on a mobile. Mm -hmm. And she said to me at one point, she was like, look, if you let me work with like regular tools and regular, she was like, I acknowledge I'm not like an Elon Musk level gonna put, you know, I'm not gonna build AI for the Tesla or something, right? But I'm a good engineer. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm not, I'm maybe not the greatest engineer, but I'm a good engineer. And if you give me regular tools <laughs> that regular engineers do, and, and she was like, and these are the types of people we can hire. She's like, the types of guys that need to work in, in San Diego, they're getting poached by <laughs> Tesla and Apple and Google and all this other stuff all the time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to keep a team. Mm -hmm. And she was like, if you just let me work with regular technology, like, I'll bang this out for you, mm -hmm. right? But but we got to stop using this, you know, this this kind of unobtaining stuff. Anyway, so mm -hmm. that flashback. Okay, so we're working with MetaPlace. MetaPlace was supposed to be used by all of Plato. Mm hmm Pretty soon, Playdom starts to say, "Eh, we're not going to use that. It's too hard. It's too expensive. We're going to do. We're going to do Unity." Yeah. So we had been forced to use MetaPlace because everyone was going to use it, <laughs> and pretty soon we're the only one using it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the cost that was supposed to be spread across all these other games is now falling on him. Yeah. And that became really unsustainable financially. Mm -hmm. Um. So, okay, we, we're, we're building on MetaPlace, so that, that led to Meta, what we built on MetaPlace, we built, we got Club Penguin onto mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, getting onto mobile was seen as just like a do or die, all the way up to, <laughs> you know, Bob Iger, no one questioned um, whether we needed to be on mobile. And I want to talk about mobile in a minute, so let's put a pin in that, because yeah. uh, I think <laughs> really important to kind of talk about yep. that as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. But so MetaPlace basically got us on the mobile. Um, and then we did Parcha 2 Snow in MetaPlace. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it was Snow. And, yep. um, you know, and that was the first one that we let Kelowna build in MetaPlace without much help from San Diego mm -hmm. and found out like there were just a lot of problems. You know, yeah, and it was hard for a third-party team to use. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> so at some point, 
you know, we were trying to, and it was taking forever to develop all this stuff because you remember we started, um, well, I guess we might as well talk about a little bit about mobile. So yeah. we started with, we had a plan to get the mobile and it was like going to take forever in a day. Mm -hmm. So then we were like, okay, well, how do we do something on mobile? So we launched the My Penguin app. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And with the and and you know got that out, and you know that was reasonably successful mm -hmm. you know, with the community, um, but it wasn't very sticky because it didn't have a lot. You yeah. Know, there was a mm -hmm. lot to do. It was yeah. a handy app, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it validated to the executives that like, okay, we're on the right path. Like, just stick with us. We're gonna get there. Then we launched, like, I think it was the town. Yeah, um, yeah, you started with the town, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one room. Mm -hmm. This is what I got, one room. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> then it took, like, months and months and months to get, I think we launched three more rooms. Yeah. We gradually kind of got to where we had most of the mm. places in Penguin, although there was a lot of Penguin that still wasn't there. Right? Yep. Also, because we had chosen to go to Unity, or sorry, not to go to Unity. Mm -hmm. We couldn't build all those mini games. We couldn't build those in an easy, you know, technology like Unity. So we <laughs> wrote them all in C plus <laughs> plus because the other problem was you have to have a way to go cross platform mm -hmm. um, to Android, right? Oh yeah. And 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 um, at this time there wasn't a great user interface solution. Unity ultimately introduced a user interface technology that um, that was cross-platform, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a great user interface. Club Penguin had a lot of user interface in it, yeah. a lot, a lot, and also the interface in Club Penguin was all really custom stuff, mm -hmm. and um, that was a huge problem for engineering because there just weren't tools at the time to let you build stuff like that. Like what the what the tools would let you do is do like you know app looking things like it looked like a button and, you know <laughs> yeah and you could mm -hmm. spin it and like that but mm -hmm. what you but like it looks like a book and then you, <laughs> you make it, all these creative ideas mm -hmm. that used to be really easy to do in flash suddenly became impossible mm -hmm. and creatively we wanted to preserve the charm of club penguin and we made a lot of horse trading around like okay you know Sometimes we'll give up on some of that in order to, you know, but we need to preserve it here. And mm. so there was a huge kind of, the technology just wasn't there, right, yeah. to do what we were trying to do. So then um, we, we kind of gradually started to build out Penguin on mobile. Um, we did Karjitsu Kar Snow. Yep. Um, we were building, oh, we were building all of those games in C++, which is like, freaking overkill. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's costing three times as much or something. We outsource game development to um, this company in New Zealand that was doing mm -hmm. all of the, that was basically taking Club Penguin games and porting them. Oh, by the way, then when we were porting them, we were like, well, are we just going to port, like a lot of these games we're not proud of anymore. You know, like they're not mm -hmm. as, like they were fine in the early days of Club Penguin, but now... Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. so now we're redoing the games. Right? So it's just like, you know, no, it's got to be great. Like, we yeah. spent this much money on it. It had to be worth it. Be great. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So now we're redesigning the games and we're trying to, just, you know, it's getting crazy. And so, mm -hmm. um, all with the intention of making it better and mm -hmm. building a Club Penguin that could, like, that could last for 10 years, mm -hmm. you know? But, but, you know, it was taking forever and costing a million, bajillion dollars. So, um, so at some point, we got Club Penguin Live on, on, on iPad, and it, would, and it did pretty well on iPad. Mm -hmm. The problem was, there weren't a lot of iPads. And um, then we got it on phone, and that was like, okay, we're gonna launch it on phone. And when we launched it on iPad, it was like this huge launch, and it charted. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then when we got it on phone, it did okay, <laughs> you know? But we were like, huh, like, it's just not as big on phone. Yeah. Like, what's up with that? And so 
we were like, we'll wait to the next party, and wait to the, you know, so we did all that stuff. Oh, this is the other thing, we were now deploying parties monthly. <laughs> on both, yeah. on both web, on both web and MetaPlace. Yeah. So they were different platforms. So the whole time you've got web, Kelowna building this web product, mm -hmm. right? Which is, which is, um, which is, you know, doing monthly parties and content at the same time a separate team in LA mm -hmm. implementing uh, parties into MetaPlace with completely different technology. Oh my God. And we're trying to do that every month. Yeah. Um, at the same rate of speed. Yeah. Right? And so trying, we're trying to have, going every month. yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep them and keep them in sync. Yeah, that's so it's really hard. So, <laughs> and at some point, the plan was we're going to cut off Flash and we're going to switch over to this MetaPlace thing on the web. That never happened <laughs> because there there just wasn't a good way to do it. Because the idea is, well, we'll build an HTML5 client. Mm -hmm. Well, there was no like HTML5 just didn't work. I mean, HTML5 still doesn't isn't great. It's you know, I'm in Web3 now, right? Mm -hmm. HTML5, you can do some things with it as long as you play within the lines. But it's still not, like, a full replacement for, you know, what Flash was or what Unity is. Or, you know, Unity's... Unity was promising in 2015. In 2015. Mm -hmm. That's almost 10 years ago. Yeah. They were they were promising WebGL support mm -hmm. for, 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 for uh, Unity. It's not supported even today. So if you go to make an app, and I've done this mm -hmm. with with uh, for Web three, and you go to launch it, and you go to compile it for Web three, it'll work mostly, but but you'll get a big pop up that mandatorily pops up. You can disable it uh -huh. in the tool, but it mandatorily pops up and says. HTML5 is not recommended by you. <laughs> so, so that's ten years later to tell you how hard, how much everyone overestimated HTML5, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got these two teams mm -hmm. that are that are building Club Penguin. You've got like a San Diego, LA team that's building mobile. You've got this Kelowna team with the hope that this mobile thing takes over Kelowna, that becomes more like a content studio that's using these tools that have built by been built by the San Diego team. Yada yada. Mm -hmm. um, uh, however, you know, we never quite got there, and then Penguin's not working as well on phone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with, like, Club Penguin's about chat, and doing it horizontal, and mm -hmm. phones are, you know, they're, like, this is the format. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, you know, portrait is the format. And if you look at the history of mobile, um increasingly the games that have been successful have moved from from landscape to portrait yeah right? mm -hmm. you look at a game like clash of clans yeah. was landscape clash royale was portrait mm -hmm. right yeah so everything kind of moved portrait snap uh innovated vertical video mm -hmm. right which 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 completely revolutionized mm -hmm. you know social networks and advertising on mobile then TikTok took it to the next level. Now TikTok is like threatening all social networks, <laughs> all television, everything, right? Mm -hmm. But it's all vertical. Yeah. In fact, I read just yesterday that like YouTube is working on an AI <laughs> technology to take ads that are horizontal and make them vertical, <laughs> um, because vertical is so much more effective. Mm -hmm. So add to that the fact that the keyboard just sucks when it's, when yeah. it's you know it's like, still yeah. mm -hmm. sideways too hard right yeah. so so no one was chatting <laughs> and if you're not chatting in club penguin then there's no kind of community right mm -hmm. so um so i'm like oh we did all this stuff to get penguin to mobile we got it to mobile it was like you know I I impossible because it's a huge it was a huge endeavor mm -hmm. and <laughs> We went and built the wrong thing. Right? <laughs> so then, plus the other thing was, like I said, L.A., San Diego were costing an arm and a minute. Mm -hmm. And then let me back up a little bit about what's going on at this point with Club Penguin Web. Okay. So, so, um, 
So with Club Penguin Web, <coughs> by the time I got to Penguin, mm -hmm. it was already in. It was all, North America was already in the coal mine, so North America was the biggest market. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that they didn't really, they had never really looked at um, it that way because they had huge growth in the UK. They were starting to have growth in Germany. They were having big growth in Brazil. So growth in all these other markets was kind of masking the fact that North America was starting to climb. Mm -hmm. But we knew we needed to kind of juice North America. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, we knew that we kind of had like a problem of like kids aging out and the first generation of kids starting to age out and all that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was like, okay, look, we need, and, and we didn't have a marketing strategy. We didn't have an effective way to acquire users. So, you know, basically Club Penguin grew viral, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, it, it, there were two things. It was viral and it was mini clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as mini clip got bigger and more successful, I mean, the rev, the rev share that Penguin had with mini clip was insane. Like, like we gave way too much to mini clip, mm -hmm. but they wanted more and more and more and more and and um uh which is kind of the you know the theme of club penguin i feel like which is like penguin was this cash cow it's kind of descended on it <laughs> but but um so mini clip wanted more and more and more and then what they started doing was using club penguin because people were going to mini clip to play club club penguin was embedded in the mini clips yeah right? mm -hmm. so people were going there to play club penguin because that's yeah. where they had always played. oh yeah you could play it on the side yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and they were using that to push people into other games yeah right? mm -hmm. so we're getting fewer and fewer new users from them because they're pushing their own stuff that they don't have to share revenue with us on mm -hmm. but they're taking a massive amount of our, <laughs> our profit yeah right mm -hmm. so the relationship just got like worse and worse right mm -hmm. and so that's where we used to get like all of our users other than viral suddenly we're not getting that many users from Miniclip, and the one that we're getting, the ones that we're getting, we're paying a lot for. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there wasn't, and there wasn't really an effective marketing strategy. So, I was like, okay, well, there weren't a lot of ways that you could market to kids because there weren't a lot of kids websites. Mm -hmm. Club Penguin was one of the biggest kids websites. <laughs> so, it, Miniclip was the was the biggest. So, yeah. there weren't a lot of other places we could go to find traffic. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, we're gonna have to like resort to traditional marketing and start trying stuff like TV advertising. Mm -hmm. So then, this, beca this began what I would call the big party era, mm -hmm. right? Which was like, okay, if we're gonna go on TV, oh, plus, sorry, combined with that, because of the technology, we were being asked not to introduce new features into Club Penguin and to just focus on content. So that the plat, so that the mobile platform and Meta Place could catch up. Yeah. So we were like, "All right, fine. You don't want us to add more games, more content. We'll just make, we'll just take that team, put them on parties, and make the parties freaking awesome." Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the first one was the medieval party, and we did this great trailer for it with Carmina Burana. If you remember, like. Uh, you know, the song from Excalibur. Which year was it? Yeah. It was it the 2013 version? 20... Was it, was it the one with uh, Big Dragon Scorn, the Dragon King? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember that trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, 2011 or 2012, yeah. yeah. Probably 2012. Mm -hmm. So, 2012. So that trailer, which people still remember, yeah, yeah. that was the first one, right? Mm -hmm. And it had, like, you know, Easter eggs in it. It was mm -hmm. like, it was really cool. Yeah. And then um, that became the, uh, the era of like, we're going to do these big parties, we're going to drive on television, and then we're going to, you know, try to acquire users that way. Mm -hmm. It worked in the beginning, right? Okay. Um, however, the problem was we very quickly saturated that audience, <laughs> and, and, and that became less efficient. And then that's when the most efficient way to acquire users was through the Disney Channel. Because mm -hmm. with Disney Channel, you know, Disney owned the number one kids' television network. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. So we were able to get those spots on Disney Channel. And I mean, those were, I mean, those spots were three minutes sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And and if you had tried to pay, buy that, uh, I mean, as an ad, like no one buys ads that are three minutes long, right? It just, uh, like, it, yeah. like maybe infomercial, like there are some infomercials in the middle of the night that you can do that, but mm -hmm. but like no one at that time did three minute prime time or, you know, like like main hours kind of commercials. Yeah. But, but Disney Channel did because they weren't ad supported. So they do it for these synergy things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Only if you hide into other Disney stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So... So that became that began the era of like collaborating with you know with the rest of the company mm -hmm. um, on you know on and trying to get synergy and the whole reason for that was basically to get the TV ads on Disney Channel that would drive new users into Club Penguin. Mm -hmm. So okay, remember I told you North America's kind of in decline. Yep. Um, which year do you think um, North America started to get into the decline? Like, was it 20, 2011. 2011? 2011. And was it like a sharp, steep decline, or was it gradual? No, it was slow, gradual. Uh, okay. But it, but it was every month. Mm. But, um, but it was yeah. like enough to cause a ripple effect, like it was alarming, let's say? It was a big deal? Well, it was it was a problem because it was our biggest market. Yeah, and, makes sense. Yeah, and so and so um, mm -hmm. we knew that if we weren't able to stabilize the sub decline, mm -hmm. that at some point, like we'd be in real trouble. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what the advertising, all that stuff, was intended to bring in new subscribers, which it did for a time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It did for a time. Um. There's also another complexifier in here. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm throwing a lot at you, but... No, it's fine. Feel free. <laughs> this is really the fun. The other complexifier in here was... Um, when we had online credit cards, mm -hmm. we would just, like, keep charging the card until people until people cancel. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But increasingly, we grew the business through these gift cards. Oh, yeah. And the gift cards and the retailers didn't want to sell, like, you know... $99 and no one would buy a $99 gift card because it's much more convenient for people to pay like five bucks a month whatever yeah. than mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but um, so people are buying these gift cards but they buy like a month or they buy three months and then it would expire and then maybe they wouldn't get another gift card so increasingly the churn on these new users the growth of our gift card business was like fantastic right mm -hmm. but 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 these guys are churning out very quickly also. Yeah. So so then what happened over time, so let's go back to we're on mobile and with with, with you know, we're on mobile, we're on the phone. By that point we had kinda gotten all the juice out of the big party era and the Disney Channel synergy. Yep. Fewer kids were watching television, so we were seeing this is when Netflix really started to take a chunk out of mm -hmm. Disney Channel. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't working as much anymore. Mm -hmm. We had lost a lot of subscribers in North America because despite our best efforts and parties and all this other stuff, yep. um, things were, you know, we, we were experiencing generational churn. Mm -hmm. Minecraft was taking off, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and kids were starting to play Minecraft, which mm -hmm. was stealing everyone, right? Yeah. Um, in the UK, Mochi Monsters was crushing us. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And they had home court advantage. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just getting harder and harder to sustain at that level. More and more energy was going into mobile. We had all this competition for mobile because pe parents would just give their kid their phone, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And the phone would, they just play whatever games were on the phone. So they didn't necessarily play kids' games, they were just playing whatever was on the phone. Mm -hmm. So, and what I told you a minute ago is we're hiring, now we have, we've gone from Little Kelowna, which was a cheap studio, mm -hmm. to um, a huge Kelowna studio, plus an LA studio, plus a San Diego studio, plus at one point a Seattle studio. Mm -hmm. All on the Club Penguin nickel. And, you know, it's just like way too expensive to operate. We can't keep running this way. So this is where I said, okay, like we've got, like, we just, 
this technology approach is just not going to work out. We need to, by now, Unity has developed, and it's clear we're building all of our games on Unity at this point, right? Yeah. Other than Club Penguin. <laughs> and I'm like, look, we need to build, we need to rebuild this in Unity. It'll be faster, it'll be a lot cheaper. If we need to outsource development, we can outsource it to anywhere in the world because there's tons and tons and tons of Unity developers. You know, some of this maintenance stuff we can outsource, like, and keep our engineers on, you know, on, uh, you know, on new content and features and stuff like that. So that's where the idea of CPI came from. Um, okay. The problem with CPI to me, so by the time of CPI, I would say, um, and I want to go back and talk about a few of these points in time in a minute, but mm -hmm. by the time of CPI, I, I was pretty burned out, I have to admit, like, because I was increasingly struggling to keep this whole thing going, right? This mm -hmm. is what I just described. Which year was that? Oh, gosh, like, yeah. like, was it towards year end, like 2016? 2014, 2015, oh, yeah. somewhere around there. Makes sense, yeah. Um, I also took on the whole mobile business, so now mm -hmm. I'm doing the turnaround of five studios at once, yeah. a business that was hemorrhaging money, um, and I'm just fixing, like, all I'm doing is turning stuff around. Because mm. they, they gave me all that because I had been, like, good at the turnaround of Club Penguin. Mm. But suddenly I'm, like, fixing everything everywhere. And yeah. it's, like, really wearing me down. Mm -hmm. And I don't have as much energy to focus on Penguin. Yeah. The other thing that happened is a lot of Penguin people have left. Um, yeah. Some of it is we had leaders <laughs> who, like, got promoted, probably over-promoted and weren't up to the task of leadership. Mm. Um some of it were people that as the technology changed and the needs of Club Penguin changed, sort of they weren't able to grow with what Penguin needed, um, you know, or they just like had been at Club Penguin. I mean, a lot of these people in Kelowna, mm -hmm. all they had ever done in their career was Club Penguin and they wanted to do something else. Yep. You know, they had been mm -hmm. at Club Penguin for, you know, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight years and it just people, mm -hmm. you know, people, people do move on at some point, right? So. Yep. We started losing a lot of people and uh, for various reasons, mm -hmm. just because time was moving on and everything else and technology and as and as the kind of the power got pulled away from Kelowna into San Diego and Redmond and, you know, LA and all these places. I think that group felt like they were less in control of their destiny and so some of those people started leaving. Yeah. And and so by the time but we also had some really freaking talented people mm -hmm. who were like the flame keepers of Club Pickle, you know? Mm -hmm. And those people had been mostly the part concentrated the party team by this point. Yeah. When um, uh, were, isn't it uh, just sorry to interrupt, isn't it true that at that time, like in twenty fifteen, I remember one of the Club Penguin players, uh, he visited the HQ and he told us that he found out that mid-2015, there were only four people working on parties, the twins and two guys. Was that true? Like, do you recall, was it really just four By people? Win? By when? By 2015. 2015, yeah, so close to the 10th yeah, anniversary. True. So what was that That's about? Probably yeah. true, mm -hmm. because we had to lay a lot of people off. So okay. we had to lay a lot of people off mm -hmm. kind of everywhere and we had gone through multiple la waves of layoffs and, mm -hmm. um, uh, and by that point we had pulled, we had pretty much pulled everyone, we put Club Penguin uh, Classic into, um, or Classic Plus Meta Place, whatever you want to call it. Because <laughs> um, Club Penguin Next was Meta Place, right? Okay. So, so it was like Club Penguin Classic Plus uh, next, we put in the maintenance mode and pulled everybody we could over to CPI to try to build CPI as quickly as we could. Okay. Um, so by that point, yeah, there were like four people doing parties. Mm. But we, but we had taken as much of the talent there. There, but at, before that, during the big big party period, mm. like the the like that team, like the twins. Emily Malik, 
uh, Adam Simonick, uh, um, Karen Johnson, who's now over at uh, Fortnite. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, um, that team was like, and there were a bunch of other people, I'm forgetting their names. At one point, that was like 30 people, that party team, and they mm-hmm. were, they, I mean, they were badasses. Like, they were mm-hmm. awesome. Yep. You know? Mm-hmm. The energy was awesome. They were like, I mean, it was just like, one of the best experiences of my life to work with those people mm-hmm. but um so we moved a lot of that talent over to um to build uh cpi um but a lot of people had left we had brought in some new people i seem to remember we had brought in a new executive producer which is always a struggle because when you bring in someone like that from the outside we brought in a game designer who was involved that was new to Club Penguin. So, like, you have a lot of people who are, like, traditional game people who had not been through the whole thing, right? Yep. Charity had left at that point mm-hmm. um, because she she eventually got burned out. Jin had left a long time ago. They had been kind of the two torch keepers. And I was kind of burned out. So, and, and by then I had, because I had all these studios, I had layers between me and Club Penguin, right? Yeah. And so I wasn't, I didn't, it, 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 from, in, in like the, the 2012, 13 era, like 2011, 12, 13, I was like hands on, like very yeah. hands on. Yeah, you were really active also on the blog, on Twitter, you were really active, yeah. Very active. Yeah. And then when I started taking on more, I, I, I had to pull back and... Mm-hmm. When I pulled back, and then a combination of me pulling back, the some of the people who were like the flame keepers left, and then you had like new people who knew games but didn't necessarily know Penguin as well. <coughs> this is how we get to CPI. Mm-hmm. So with CPI, first of all, I didn't want to call it CPI. Okay. And I should have, and in retrospect, I should have been tougher about it because... Um, I always thought it was a mistake to make it a new island. And I said that and no one listened to me because I said because I felt I felt very strongly that if you tell the kid like the kids are attached to Club Penguin and if you mm-hmm. tell them that Club Penguin is going away Yeah and and Ooh. they're going to some place else. It just loses all that all that investment they put yeah. you know, over, you know, almost a decade now into this thing yeah. is gone. Right? Yeah, yeah, and we saw the reactions unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing was I was for redesigning the island. Mm-hmm. Um and I actually pushed redesigning aspects of the island. But not as extreme as they did because mm-hmm. my thing was the, pr- the problem with the island is the way that it was designed. It had way too many rooms. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because everything, we could only have these front facing rooms, right? So if we needed to add something, like because it wasn't 3D, there was no, yeah. like you couldn't explore a space. Yeah. So, and if we needed, we couldn't add a room behind a room because it was like 2D, right? So yeah. mm. we'd have to add them to the side yeah. and then whatever or under. And so we wound up like having all these rooms, mm-hmm. and there were there was no social concentration in them. So you would go like room after room after room, and there yeah. was nobody in there. Mm-hmm. And so, it, and so part of the thing that that I asked the team to do was like, can we push some of the stuff together and figure out how to just create more social concentration so that people like can we put the town and the square you know to, to, to like together mm-hmm. and and make those like you know make those like one you know like kind of one area yeah so that everyone's kind of grouped in one space mm-hmm. but that's not what they did what they did was they completely came up with a whole new island <laughs> yeah and and i was like guys like this, i was like this doesn't feel familiar mm-hmm. it there's nothing like there's i'm like i'm a club penguin player like where's the hook here you know like, yeah like i want to go in this should be club penguin but better in 3d mm-hmm. and what and what and what it is is it's this whole new thing mm-hmm. that's kind of penguin yeah right? it's an entirely different game essentially it's an entirily different game so all yeah. your hardcores go screw them some out yeah now that said there were a lot of positive things about the new penguin i think that about cpi Mm -hmm. um 
I think that um, it had, uh, first of all, it's built in unity. Yeah. Um, second of all, um, which would have been a more lasting platform, it gave us a solution for web and mobile. Mm-hmm. This was the other thing is they're not web, but you know, by this point, we, when we first started trying to look for a way to replace the technology, no one, no one believed. In fact, Lane as an article of faith mm-hmm. did not believe in a downloadable app on the PC. Like he was like, no one's going to download anything. The history yeah. of download is terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing that's ever downloadable ever works. <laughs> and that was true at the time that Club Penguin was launched. Yeah. The reason Club Penguin was successful was no plugin, no download. Right. Mm-hmm. However, everybody's got broadband. At a certain point, the internet's much faster. Yeah. And now you've got Minecraft and all these other people are now used to downloading apps, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the mobile phone habituated people to downloading apps. Yeah. So now this allergy that people had around downloading apps off the internet is all it's not a problem, especially the kids. So with CPI, we were like, okay, great. We we could do it in Unity. And that gives a solution for phone, and it gives us a solution for desktop, right? Mm-hmm. So finally, we're on one tech stack. It's not a tech stack that requires rocket surgeons to work on. <laughs> it doesn't require a team of 100 people. Mm-hmm. We can put it all in Kelowna. Yeah. We, get back to, we can get back to what kind of made this thing great in the first place, which is artist designers working with tools, making mm-hmm. gameplay. Locally, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, this was the hope. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> one, I think we changed Club Penguin too much. The other, the other thing that that was good about it was part of the other problem with Penguin is that it didn't have very good game design, and and mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying that to like as a smack on. on yeah. Penguin, right. Yeah. But it probably was prime for its time and. Uh, it's well, it yeah. had it had it had games that were well designed. Yeah. But it didn't have what we call in 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 you know in games a core meta loop that was strong. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the coin economy was always massively inflated. Like, you know, people had way more coins than they could, they could ever spend. Right. <laughs> it's just like yeah. The the economy was unbalanced. Mm-hmm. You could really easily earn coins. You could just walk your buffalo, you would get 200 coins. Yeah, so there, <laughs> there was just a lot of like... Yeah. From a gameplay level, there were a lot, a lot of things that drive engagement and bring people back. Mm-hmm. The, the problem was the way Club Penguin, you know, original Club Penguin was kind of built. Like, if you were a member, mm-hmm. you know, you could just kind of like easily, too easily get coins. Mm-hmm get everything, there was no challenge, and now you got everything and you're done, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. or again. And so, part of the trick with building these games is everyone complains about grind, but if you don't have any grind and you just let people, like part of the, part of what makes you anticipate getting something in a game is that you have to work to get it. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. And it's the, it's the thrill of anticipation, and if you take that away, it's not fun anymore. Yeah. So, People think, you know, a lot of players are like, ah, oh, get me into this grind, just give me what I want. And mm-hmm. it's like, if I do that, you're going to be bored because, yeah. because you're going to have what you want and it's not going to mean anything to you mm-hmm. and you're going to immediately be like, where's the next thing? Mm-hmm. And so we were on this, what they call the content treadmill, which was constantly trying to put out new stuff for people to play mm-hmm. because we didn't have a, a game design that, that kept people engaged through gameplay. It was mm-hmm. all about content design. Was so, this did this play yeah. into the reason why in the later years you guys during parties started having quests like every two days you had to come back to unlock items? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's exactly why. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, and I can't take credit for this, right? But uh-huh. I think that if you look at the evolution of the parties. Mm-hmm with the quests, come back every couple days and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who left Penguin and went to Fortnite. <laughs> I think a lot of thinking, I think a lot of Club Penguin party yeah. thinking has wound up in the event structure of Fortnite. Yeah, and I can see it. A lot of the early things that we were doing with parties 
the mm. game Battle Pass. Yeah. And mm. when I saw Battle Pass for the first time, I was like, <laughs> I was like, this they nailed it. I yeah. Was like if this if we had come up with this, mm -hmm. we might have saved Club Penguin because this was the idea, mm -hmm. right? And we got very close to Battle Pass, but not quite. Mm -hmm. Battle Pass solved a lot of problems that I could spend an hour on, but I, I won't. <laughs> but, 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 um, but yes, that's why the party started to be more about get people to check in more frequently, mm -hmm. give them reasons to come back, because we wanted to meter out the content and make people feel like they were getting value for their money, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. so uh, and make people work a little bit. So, and make these parties last, stretch them out so we can make the next party. Yeah. So, um, CPI, we built in this quest system from the very beginning. So, mm -hmm. the idea was, great, we'll have these kind of like lifetime, you know, kind of player lifetime quests, like you can play whenever you want to. And then we'll also have these, um, you know, for parties, we'll be able to use that system with the UI on it, and now it's the party quest system. So, we were like, this is much more scalable we'll be able to make much more gameplay, we'll be able to have daily quests and party quests and weekly quests and like people will have so many quests they'll never be bored. <laughs> yeah. So that was so and, and we were able to fix a lot of the game design problems, not all of them, but a lot of the game design problems mm -hmm. mm -hmm. by starting over and kind of cleaning it up and giving it just a better like like a raw car design. So all of that was good, you know, but I think that um, something that Lance said the other day. Um, oh, on Twitter when we were all talking. Yeah, when we were talking together. Yeah. yeah, something he said on Twitter the other day was was actually very true. Mm -hmm. Which is that, and this was after I left, but they want they finally launched CPI <coughs> on desktop, and more people were playing on desktop than mobile. And I think that, in retrospect. Mm -hmm. The biggest blind spot that everyone had, and I mean everyone, right, mm -hmm. was that um, really kids never stopped playing games on PC. Mm -hmm. If anything, they were playing more games on PC because they were yeah. playing their minds out on Minecraft. And then yeah. Roblox really took off at that time, right? Mm -hmm. So both of those are exploding. At the same time that we're like thinking, oh, the PC's dead. We have to get everybody over to mobile. Yeah, mobile was a much more competitive environment mm -hmm. um, uh, because you were competing against every other game mm -hmm. on mobile, many of which could be made more cheaply. And all those games on mobile are able to monetize through free to play, which we couldn't do because we had kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they're able to make much more money per user. So we can never, you know, really compete effectively with them. Uh, financially on that platform mm -hmm. and I think in retrospect if we had focused on and no one and this is total hindsight because no one mm -hmm. look if I had said this in 2011 or even 2015 yeah. to Bob I, which we had lots of news about this up to Bob right mm -hmm. he would have said you're freaking nuts and you're <laughs> liar you know <laughs> if I had said look mobile is not the place we need to make our stand. We need it. We have a huge base on PC. We need to maintain our PC base and then figure mm -hmm. out how to grow on mobile as well. Mm -hmm. If that had been the strategy, mm -hmm. Club Penguin might have survived. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but despite all that, all these technology problems and all the kind of all the trying to bridge, it was a pro. So, so I guess to sum up. Club Penguin was the beneficiary of being the first big game built in Flash. Yeah. The first MMO built in Flash. Mm -hmm. And it had kind of first mover advantage. But it also died by Flash. <laughs> and yeah. every technology thing that was done after and every mistake that was made after hmm. was with the intention of trying to find a way to get it to a more su sustainable technology mm -hmm. direction. Um, and, and that... Um, proved elusive, you know, mm -hmm. and I think if we had focused on, if I could go back in time mm -hmm. and do one thing, but th the thing is they would never let me do it, <laughs> I would say, let's focus on desktop and do a, do a downloadable client in Unity from the very beginning, mm -hmm. And but that, I would have never gotten away with that, so mm -hmm. couldn't have done that either. <laughs> <laughs>
But that begs the question, how, how come you would not have been able to get away with that if you were the vice president, the general manager? Um, like, didn't you call the shots, essentially? <laughs> the company, not really, right? You've mm. got, you've got, um, you call some shots. I mean, you get, I mean, sure, I could decide what the parties were. I could decide, you know, I had, I had a lot of latitude, but like ultimately the big financial decisions, mm -hmm. the, you know, there, there are certain strategic decisions. I mean, yeah. Disney owns this thing, right? So, yeah. um, you know, the big strategic decisions were driven, were driven, at, uh, you know, were, in some ways above our heads you know okay. um mm -hmm. or to say like there were there were there were outside pressures at disney that were um impossible to resist <coughs> long term mm -hmm. that, um i couldn't just make all those decisions I mean, you know the the meta place example mm -hmm. is one where that was forced on us we fought it pretty hard mm -hmm. um at multiple times lane and i both i mean that was candidly one of the reasons lane left yeah. Is that he couldn't he couldn't get on board with the MetaPlace program. Yeah. And I said, you know, I mean, Lane and I are very close. We're very close then. We're very close now. Mm -hmm. But you know, after he left, I said, look, I'm gonna try to make it work for the good of Penguin, right? Mm -hmm. Because I just didn't want everyone to get laid off, and you know, like, yeah. and for the whole thing to go away. So I was like, look, this is the road we're on. I'll try to make it work instead of fighting it. But we tried multiple times to get off of it, and, you know, and we were, I mean, we were not allowed. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that um, that there were, you know, yes, I had a lot of latitude, but there were also a lot of corporate considerations. Yeah. In fairness, because by this point, Club Penguin's losing, you know, losing money, mm -hmm. in part because of all the technology that we're throwing at it, right? So yeah. it's like, the, the part of the thing that happened with Penguin as well was... It was this cash cow when we bought it. It was a small team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in 2008, when I went up there, you know, for the first time, it was like, you know, I don't know, 60 people, 50, 60 people, including customer service and like very small team. It all fit on one floor. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I kind of took over Disney Toys, didn't go up to Kelowna for a little, for about two years. The next time I go up is like 2010. And it's three floors. There's like 250 or 300 people in the building, <laughs> right? Literally, there was a meeting. Like, they had a meeting where there were so many meetings mm -hmm. that, that they were sending uh, uh, assistants to take notes <laughs> from the project managers because the project managers were in other meetings. Like, it was wow. ridiculous. We had to find all, find all that. Yeah, and it was like every problem that Club Penguin had, <laughs> instead of building tools or technology or whatever to get more efficient, mm. there was like let's just hire more people. Okay. So the thing is, it had become very. It had been this fast, nimble, scrappy thing. It suddenly became this very bureaucratic mm -hmm. uh, deal that moved very slow. Then on top of that, you start to add all this technology stuff. And Club Penguin becomes very, goes from being lean, lean, very inexpensive to being very expensive. Yeah. Um, and also, like, you know, the the company, you know, wanted Club Penguin to be the, you know, the, the kind of <laughs> guinea pig for all these things. So, you know, one was Metaplace, but another one was like a big data center mm -hmm. that they wanted to build. And they were going to host all the games out of it. Club Penguin was going to wind up paying for most of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it would have been cheaper for us <coughs> to host Club Penguin in AWS, mm -hmm. but Disney wouldn't let us use AWS. Uh -huh. So the entire industry, all of our competitors are in AWS, but we can't be in it. And we're <laughs> sold yeah, and yeah. When we're paying like literally 10 times more for hosting mm -hmm. than our competitors, but we can't be profitable <laughs> because we're paying for this thing that Disney either yeah. this asset Disney built, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all this kind of internal stuff that's going on that just, it made it very, very, very mm -hmm. difficult. But, um, you know, I don't want to complete my completely let myself or anyone else off the hook. Like, we all made mistakes. I made tons of mistakes. And I think about it all the time and every day. Like, I saw, you know, one of your, 
you know, somebody posts online, like, does he feel any guilt? Or yeah, there was that question, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, like, I had a near nervous breakdown trying to save Claude Penguin. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I've never professionally given my heart and soul more to anything than Claude Penguin. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so do I have regrets? I mean, yeah, you bet. I mean, I do, Lane does. Lance does, everybody does, like, I think that's why Lance has been messing around with, you know, with, um, you know, with, with, with his kind of online world thing that kind of yeah. looks like Club Penguin, mm -hmm. Lyndon's doing what he's doing, like, everyone wants, everyone, you know, none of us wanted to let it go, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and, you know, but we all made mistakes as well, mm. right? And none of the problems were easy, and none of them had perfect solutions. And most games, not to let ourselves off the hook, don't survive things like this, you know? So I, I, I don't think it's any one person's fault or any, like, there's no good guy, bad guy. It's mm. not all on Disney. Mm. Disney gave us a ton of support and let us lose money for a long period of time, too. You know, so it wasn't like, it wasn't. Um, it, it wasn't like goodbye, guy, bad guy. It's just mm -hmm. like it was. It was a very transitional period mm -hmm. in in the in in the internet, and mm -hmm. um, everyone did what they thought was right, but mm -hmm. um, but we just didn't. We just didn't make it. A lot of other people didn't make it either. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm friends with Mike Lacton Smith, so you, you may not know who he is, but Mike Lacton Smith was the. Uh, was Mr. Moshi, so he was the head of mm -hmm. Moshi Monsters. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. they had all the same problems in a different way, mm -hmm. and he lost Moshi, Mo Moshi Monsters ultimately because they were, you know, struggling and losing subscribers and all that. And he got so stressed out by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is what I should have thought to do. But but I was too busy trying to save the thing. He got so stressed out by the whole thing that when he left, to manage his anxiety, he got in a meditation, <laughs> and he built an app called Calm. Have you ever heard of the Calm app? Oh yeah, it's that big app. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the most successful. Yeah, apps yeah, yeah, yeah. I've even seen it on Twitter. Like they tweet constantly. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's literally like made a billion. Uh, uh, oh my god, that's so smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's made a gajillion dollars. <laughs> yeah. But what happened was. Mm -hmm. He was so stressed out for Moshi Monsters. <laughs> he he got into meditation, then realized a lot of people could benefit from this. Yeah. He built that app, moved to San Francisco, <laughs> away from London, cleared his headspace, get away from Moshi Monsters, and like became very successful in that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so you have to remember that like all of our competitors, you know, had mm -hmm. the same problem. Yeah. And the only one to make it out of that era really was Roblox. And the reason Roblox made it and is so successful today is because they own their own technology. Mm -hmm. But Roblox yeah. was like uh, somehow scraped by. But Roblox, it took 10 years for Roblox to really take off. And to, yeah. to Lane's point about plugins, one of the things that really limited their growth for probably half of that was the fact that they had this plugin, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you know, it wasn't until people were willing to download Roblox, which took time, yeah, mm -hmm. that they were able to take off. Now they're the biggest meta play. I mean, basically, <laughs> and Fortnite are the two biggest meta versions. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's because they own their own technology, mm. um, which maybe mm -hmm. validate some of the engineers who were trying to build their own technology, like MetaPlace, right? I mean, yeah. ultimately, the guys that survived. You know, if you look at it, we're the ones who own their own tech. So it just, you know, mm -hmm. none of them are on Unity. <laughs> yeah, so basically you people, your hearts were in the right place, but unfortunately things didn't go the way you wanted. It, that's, that's uh, understanding. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, before we continue with the interview, I know that you wanted to take a break to use the... No, I'm good. I'm good. All right, let's continue. So, um, is there anything else you would like to touch on regarding the app or CPI, or do we move on? No, so just ask me questions now, because I've talked to you. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, that was really... 
a lot of my questions from CPI and the Club Penguin app answered, so thank you for that. Um, one question that we have was, um, which, which is something you touched on. At one point, the train man on Club Penguin Memories, his blog, he posted an article discussing the future of Club Penguin, what he wished you guys would do, and some suggestions, because he felt the game was sort of falling apart. This was at the end of 2015. So you made a big comment uh, on that article. You wrote a lot of things that you... Uh, you addressed basically the concerns. And one of the things you mentioned was the whole uh, that you promised that we would get uh, server jumping and you also mentioned things such as the rooms that you're gonna have it such that servers no longer exist that way you could add endless rooms so that we could yeah. keep on like exploring new rooms so what happened to that whole idea um so that was a function of meta place um so it basically mm -hmm. died with meta place but okay. <laughs> the way that the way that um mm -hmm. rooms were was that each was a um, well what, what you had is you had servers right mm -hmm. and then with each within each server and the server was like literally a server like it was a, a party it was a like an actual club penguin classic uh -huh. in club penguin classic you had a you know like an <coughs> actual box in a data center somewhere <laughs> mm -hmm. that was that you were playing on and yeah. then there were rooms within that um that that were each kind of their own instance of a, of a multiplayer thing, right? And mm -hmm. we can have up to I think 45 or maybe 60 people at max in those. Um, mm -hmm. And so the way you scaled Club Penguin was you know, literally you added servers, you know. So <laughs> every server, so literally to, to scale, part of the reason it was expensive to scale Club Penguin was mm -hmm. If we needed to add like a lot of people for a party or something, we had to go buy the machines, install them. Build. It goes back to that data center. We had to actually build our own our own yeah. thing. Um, and suddenly, your business becomes about running data centers instead of making a game, which mm -hmm. is you know not what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So. You even mentioned in that comment something related. You said that, unfortunately, most of your time is being diverted away from working on parties and fixing bugs towards server maintenance. Yeah, because mm -hmm. cause we were... Um, the other thing I should talk about is the bots. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of this, so... Um, you mean the bots that hackers started using towards the end? The bots, the DDoS attacks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, unfortunately, a theme towards the very end, yeah. Well, it started in 2012. So we had mm. the so the big party era for me goes from the medieval. What, what, what's it? What I have the calendar here. Uh, the big dragon so was 2012. Party. Medieval 2012, which was medieval 2012. Yeah. Yeah. So the big party era goes, <coughs> in my opinion, goes mm -hmm. from uh, 2012 mm -hmm. to um, 2013. Yeah. When we launched the Star Wars party, right? I would agree, yeah. It was a really lifetime, yeah. Everyone was there, yeah. And that period, because we did the Puffle party in March, uh, we did... Mm -hmm. um, we did two Marvel superhero takeovers, we did Operation Blackout, we did... Mm -hmm. um, we did the Medieval party, we did... Um, we did... Uh, you had the Prehistoric party, that was a new party as well. We had the prehistoric party. We did Karjitsu Snow. Oh yeah, that was a big one. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. In May, um, and then in July, we did the Star Wars party. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, that was sort of the. I mean, you might say that like the. Oh, the, I I think you could add uh, August to it because August was the Team Beach yeah. movie, which was the most Team popular. Movie. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. Team Bitch movie was another one. So, um, but you could say kind of like Star Wars, Team Beach was kind of the end of the big party era. Yeah. So, um, and it's also when I started getting, start my attention started getting pulled away to other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, Star Wars, by the time, so the big party era were like growing traffic in North America again, growing subs and we turned Club Big One around. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like we saved it. It's going great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yes. It was a really and amazing time. Yeah. Getting, 
and then we start getting high. <laughs> <laughs> so, club, so when Star Wars launched, we started getting DDoS attack. Heavily. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this, but like we were shut down. Like we were hard shut down. And not only mm-hmm. were they DDoSing, they uh, were DDoSing Penguin, mm-hmm. but it shut down all of Disney's. Oh wow! It went that bad. Normal. Oh wow! It yeah. The entire data center off. I remember so, Club Penguin being shut down, but Disney, wow, that went too far. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. So, we... Um, mm-hmm. and, and part of the thing we found out, right, was that Disney had no DDoS uh, solution. Mm-hmm. Because they had never been DDoS before. <laughs> so, they had no defense. No wow. defense. Wow. So we assumed, okay, we're in this D- Disney data center, right? That we're paying a lot of money for. Mm-hmm. Surely, these guys like they have an ops center, <laughs> with big screens, and yeah, if we get DDoS, these guys are gonna like you know have our backs, do something, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it turns out they don't have you know, a way to stop it, which makes no sense. So we're just getting hammered, mm-hmm. and. The only way they could protect Disney was to basically <laughs> cut the network between Disney and Club Penguin <laughs> while we were being hacked, while we got a DDoS solution in place. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so, so Club Penguin, so Star Wars, the Star Wars party was supposed to be like the tippy top of all of that stuff we had done. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It, the traffic was growing, and that mm-hmm. was going to be the big one. And then we were just going to come off of that and mm-hmm. like be rolling. Mm-hmm. And we got crushed, and then we kept getting crushed by DDoS. And I mean, this went on for months and months and months. Yeah. I was on calls on weekends. I had to skip my kids' soccer games. Like, mm-hmm. I was on calls for six hours at a time, sitting yeah. there with literally able to do nothing but just kind of like sitting there going guys we really have to fix this yeah you know i mean it was it was it was it was it was miserable because we just kept getting crushed and so we had all these kids that Mm -hmm. were that had grown up with penguin who were enthusiastic and then what they like to do is like hack it yeah and they thought like they were having fun and being mischievous and whatever yeah but they were like uh you know, really doing damage to the business and the, and and the, and the team. Like, I mean, you know, like yeah. we wound up having to lay people off because we were getting because we didn't hit our financial goals and we were getting DDoS. So yeah, it was a big um, deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah. It was a it was a big deal. And at one point, the other thing that was going on <laughs> in all of this was there was some malicious actor somewhere in Europe. Okay, um, we never quite tracked him down. Okay. Um, but that was using kids. This was an adult that was using kids as a cutout to do these attacks. And basically, what he had done is he showed them how to attack the Disney network. Okay. And he had gotten them like you know gotten into Club Penguin user groups or something, and then like you know aren't you pissed that they're doing these Disney parties or whatever, and like got them worked up against us, right? Yeah. And and. Um, I kind of remember something like that. I kind of, yeah. Like on, so he yeah. was, whoever this guy was, was doing this. Mm-hmm. His real goal was to penetrate Disney security. Okay. And what he was basically doing was using the DDoS attacks and mm-hmm. the vulnerabilities in Penguin in the data center to knock over the security to infiltrate Disney's network. And he got in at one point. He got yeah. into the park somewhere. Um... <laughs> And then it's really serious, right? Yeah. So wow. Um, so it exposed a lot of weaknesses in the network, mm-hmm. and um, but you know, so at this point, you've got these guys that like really malicious actors who were who were trying to use who were trying to use these kids. Mm-hmm. So this was going on and on for months, and finally we were able to beat a lot of that back. And mm-hmm. um, but it took six months. Mm-hmm. And the damage that was done to Penguin, like, it just, we lost all that momentum. Um, 
we lost a lot of subscribers <coughs> because they had signed up for the Star Wars party or whatever, got mad, yeah. unsubscribed. Oh wow! Um, and like it really, it really hurt the business. And I would say that that was almost as much as anything else one of the fatal. It was a very, it wasn't the fatal blow, but it was, it was a pretty. <laughs> was hard to recover after that so it was so it wasn't like some so it wasn't like some small incidents were like let's say bored people were trying to hack into the game and haha and that's it it's over it was really that devastating no they shut down club penguin wow they, uh -huh. I mean, they shut down club penguin for days for days i remember it being shut down by these attacks for like a few hours but days wow that's really bad yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean there were there were it was probably about uh, i i mean that whole first weekend it took us a week to recover during a weekend so that's even worse <laughs> it crushed us yeah it wow especially during star wars as you mentioned because you'd expect star wars to bring in a lot of audience and that was like the worst time so yeah the worst time. yeah um i remember however um in 2014 unfortunately as you might recall the worst um incident happened in the community which was train man 1405 if you remember his own account got compromised so that was a huge um, and it it like spread through the community so it was a big shock oh there was a lot of stuff there yeah was, there was, i mean there was there was train man getting hacked there was um you know, there's also just all the Sarah April drama all the time. <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because I... Okay, so, you know what's really funny? Um, many people actually lobbied me secretly to ask you a specific question related to Sarah April. But I was insisting, okay. guys, I would ask it, but only if Chris was in a good mood because this is kind of a question that you might not enjoy. But since you brought her up, I guess <laughs> I'm really surprised and I'm actually interested to ask you. So the question is, and I'm sure you probably are, are going to see this coming. Um, Sarah April, for whatever reason, she blamed you specifically a lot. There were a lot of her articles that painted you as being, you know, the Darth Vader of Club Penguin. She called you Darth Spike High. She had uh, custom images of you with a lightsaber confronting her and essentially slicing her down. So for whatever reason, she really directed her hatred to takeovers and to the replacement of Earth Day and these uh, little things that she didn't like about the game towards you as a person. So the big yeah. question here is, how do you feel? Like, did you not care at all? Did it hurt a bit? Was it really hurtful? Many people are just curious, how did you f feel? Uh, <laughs> um, well, so we're not sure that Sarah April was a kid, first of all. But to be honest, no one knows, like, her... Lane was convinced it was an adult. Um, and before mm. she gave me a lot of trouble, she gave him a lot of trouble. Did she? And yeah, yeah, uh, she used to give him a lot of trouble, but not as much as she gave me. Yeah, she really latched onto you for whatever reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she. But but you know, mm -hmm. um, she. Um, you know, so we never knew whether whether she was. Um, an adult or a kid. Yeah. We also felt that um, she was, and, and those who believed that she was an adult, mm -hmm. thought that she was part of some ring that were, you know, up to no good in some way. So, oh, okay. you know, I never fully, I, I, I got to the place where I was probably, there were things that she was saying and doing where I was like, this is a little so sophisticated for a kid. Um, yeah. But, so I question it, but I, I had to assume it was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. It the, w it the, wasn't too clear, as you said. It wasn't too clear. Sometimes she would like discuss things that related to coding and stuff. So I'd be like, yeah, it had to be a teenager at least, maybe a young adult. But sometimes she would be too childish in her wording. Like, I wish, I wish, I wish we could have an igloo with like smiley faces. So it was too cute to be a mature person, to be an adult. So it was always unclear. Yeah, we never knew. We never knew. It yeah. Was so <laughs> anyway, so um, because well, one of the things is, you know, Lane said to me at one point that like she's got a lot of blogs, and this isn't her, her only blog, and we think she's got all these other blogs, and that this is a business. Oh wow! That basically she's running, 
and making a lot of money off of Club Penguin kind of running these blogs and ads that she's got on her blogs, and she's mad because um, <laughs> Club Penguin's not doing as well and she's not making as much money. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. um, oh my so god. I never knew how much of that was true, but that was something people said. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's actually funny. <laughs> I remember one time she, Mm -hmm. I remember, I mean, there was a lot of back and forth. She was consistently mean to me. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. you know, look, kids are going to be kids and I'm an adult and I can't, you know, like, like I had to be the adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, (laughs) you can't, I mean... It's kind of pathetic if you're going to be an executive at Disney making a lot of money, with, you know, and you're going to get, like, upset at this yeah. kid that's, like, calling you names, mm. right? Yeah. Like, you can't... I'm supposed to be the... You're supposed to be, like, as people saw you as, like, the tip-top guy, so you have to set an image, I guess. Yeah, and I have to be the, like, Mr. Rogers, yeah. constantly positive, <laughs> you know, um, mm-hmm. mature yeah. voice in the room. I'm trying to strike a, bit, a, a balance between being <laughs> fun mm-hmm. and, and and a member of the community, right? And yep. you know, just like some adult who's like, you know, sounds like a guy from, you know, like the Peanuts cartoons, <laughs> you know, all the adults in the Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm trying not, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I want to be fun to, you know, I want to be kind of be able to indulge my inner kid. Mm-hmm. But, then, but then at the same time, like, um, I gotta be mature about it, right? Mm-hmm. I remember one time where I sort of lost my cool with her. I <laughs> said something. I don't know what it was. Okay. It was on Twitter, and I sort of responded to her, and kind of. Oh no, it wasn't on Twitter. It was an email. She sent me some email. Like I, she emailed you privately, it. like Chris Heatherly at Disney, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And oh wow. I emailed her back and kind of said. <laughs> said a bunch of things that were like unfair, untrue, really rude. Mm-hmm. And I sort of responded back in a professionally worded but not very... Uh, <laughs> you basically didn't uh, do what Club Penguin support would do to her. Club Penguin support would be like, Dear Sarah April, thank you for your comments. We really value your opinion. You were kind of like, thank you for your opinion, but it's unfair. We tried one, two, three. Yeah, I said it's unfair, and I think I'll, I i can't remember exactly what I said, but I sort of said something along the lines of, look, this persistently negative thing that you're doing yeah. is like, it's poisoning the well, it's, mm-hmm. it's like, it's killing the fun for everyone, like, you think that you're, mm-hmm. I understand that you think you're the guardian of the penguin flame, but you <coughs> understand that, like, we're all working really hard here to mm-hmm. try to keep this thing going, and, you know, I mean, I'm working nights and weekends, and like, yeah. giving everything I've got. My kids are playing Club Penguin. Like, I, like, mm-hmm. I couldn't get cared more, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and I was like, look, you know, you need to understand, I wasn't mad about what she was saying about me. It was the team. It was like she was picking on the team, mm-hmm. and I was like, you need to stop this because you're actually destroying Club Penguin by constantly, like, bad mouthing it on your blog. Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't mind when you criticize us. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and by the way, I take your commentary very seriously. And when you say something that I think is critical but 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 true, mm-hmm. we try to do something about it. Mm-hmm. But when you're just constantly personally coming after everyone, it just it bums us all out. Mm-hmm. It it's like it's just not helpful, right? Yeah. And so I kinda wrote this thing to her and I sent it to Lane. Mm-hmm. And I like, said, dude, don't engage with her. He was like, you know what? I did that one time. He was like, you know what? Everybody gets one. He was like, I did that to her one time. And I just found she comes back at you and comes back at you. Oh, so my God. Just, he was like, just let it go. Okay. Like, so and that was good advice. But then, okay, so this was just but then okay. online, mm-hmm. My like spike hike followers, my fans are like attacking her or something, or like you know, like, yeah, they didn't, her, they didn't like her. Mm-hmm. And then I had to go online and say, guys, like stop it, you know, yeah, like, like stop, like Club Penguin is not about this. It's not about, <laughs> it's not about my, 
you know, like, you're not making me proud by picking on Sarah in April. Like, that's not what Club Penguin is about. Yeah. And I kind of said something that was along the lines of, like, okay, I'm not proud of anyone here. Like, can we all just stop this? Yeah. And, like, get back to what Club Penguin's supposed to be about. And kind of had to be the adult, you know, and, like, yeah. kind of put everyone in the corner, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and they, like, actually listened to me. Mm. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster. Because then I felt bad for Sarah because I'm like, okay, this kid, I don't want this kid getting bullied. I don't want this kid. Yeah. It's not what we're about. Mm -hmm. And I'm not leading some, you know, I don't want these guys doing it in my name. And then, you know, yeah. that's not right. Like, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, but, so I don't have any, any, I mean, mm. you know. I don't resent say Sarah Abel or something mm -hmm. like that. I think you know like where she was like were you ever hurt? Like did you ever read her blog and you were like, Wow Sarah, like come on, I've worked so hard, I care about the game and you're accusing me of being like the enemy like I mean how can you not, right? Yeah. When she's accusing me of murdering her <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, it's like, I mean it's true, but yeah. How can you not like yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, mm -hmm. that wasn't my job, right? My job yeah. is not to be that guy. It's not to be Chris Heatherly, the person who's exhausted and tired and mm -hmm. giving his all and offended that some kid called him a name. You know, mm -hmm. like, my job is to be an adult and an executive and, a, you know, and to be Spike Hike, which is, yeah. you know, to calm things down and try mm -hmm. to be bigger than that and try to be a role model for the rest of the community. So, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, look, when somebody is persistently crappy to you on the internet, like, you mm -hmm. know, we've all been there, and, you know, um, yeah. and it's hard, you know, I mean, you know, my my Facebook persona is a lot different than my, you know, <laughs> Spike Hike Twitter persona, right? Mm -hmm. But I had to be a different guy, and, you know, that's not inauthentic, it's just, mm -hmm. like, that's what I was there to do, yeah. what I was about, and so... Um, <laughs> And, and I tried to do that job with like, high integrity because I feel like, look, I feel like being Spike High made me be a better man. You know, it made me have to rise above and be an, a parent, yeah. you know, or at least adult in the room to like all of these kids. And mm -hmm. you know what? When you have to, when that's what you're doing and you're the, you know, like Mr. Rogers type figure to, mm -hmm. you know, all of the, you know, to millions of children, like, it's the world's biggest playground, but it also, you know, it's like, it, it's, you know, it, it can get exhausting being the only, you know, like the, the, the only adult on the playground, but that's yeah. right. You know, I wasn't there by myself. I wasn't the only one. I was, you know, like the ad customer service and lots of other people, but, yeah. you know, um, but the, but the, and the moderators and all that, but, yeah. you know. So basically what you're saying, she didn't just screw with you, she screwed with everyone. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Moderators, she would yeah. send them terrible emails. Yeah. They, they would, I mean, she, it, that's when it, my temperature got high, was when she was just harassing mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah, that's and still far, yeah. The other thing that I felt was, the other thing I felt was, mm -hmm. that she was doing all these negative things and then bringing negative attention to herself and then people would pick on her. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of what I tried to tell her that like if you stop behaving this way, mm -hmm. people will stop picking on you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you're sort of like instigating <coughs> it, and then and then and then and then playing the victim yeah. when people react to what you're doing, and mm -hmm. like if you would stop that cycle, yeah. Like I'm gonna tell everyone to back off, mm -hmm. but. But can you please just stop pouring gas on the fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a really fun <laughs> change of topic because like so many people really insisted because like one of the things that people remember you for besides 2013 and Star Wars and Cardinal Snow and the apps was the Sierra April drama. So to go back to the <laughs> to go back to the topic that you were talking about previously, you specifically brought up the DDoS attacks and you brought up Sierra April drama. So were you gonna talk more about the things that kind of hurt Cup Penguin? Well, I think I was just saying like mm -hmm. I think I was just saying like you know mm -hmm. um, I, 
I think I was talking about like by the end I was pretty exhausted. And yeah. Was, or or what was going on kind of during that mm -hmm. that party period was we were getting debossed. Yeah. We had the hacker trying to break into Disney. Mm -hmm. We had all these technology problems. We had you know. Yeah. Had, I remember. We were down our neck. We had yeah. Sarah April. <laughs> 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 it was honestly have you ever seen succession you're old enough now you're an adult so have you ever seen Succession? i haven't Maybe. seen it but i've heard of it i've heard of the story kind of yeah if if i if should the know. movie were made right <laughs> not Club Penguin, it would be like a lot like succession <laughs> or a show like that it would be like so much it would be it would be entertaining yeah <laughs> so, so much but like yeah all the time <laughs> drama every day but it was also look it yeah was drama, but it was also super fun like um you know i mean yeah so there was some good to it parts of my life so there was some positive to it like it wasn't all negative and like oh my god i hit oh, my yeah. oh that's great oh yeah i don't i don't mean to i'm sorry i i i Oh no, you have it, but just to set the record clear, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, look, it was. Mm -hmm. Club Penguin was the best job I ever had mm -hmm. by a long shot, mm -hmm. and the I think to talk about the positives for a minute. And yeah. That Kelowna studio was a special. It was just a special place mm -hmm. with special people and. When we would take executives from out of town, like, you know, huh? Jimmy Pitaro took over the business or whatever, mm -hmm. we would bring them up, you know, they would just come out of there, like, floating on a cloud, <laughs> you know, like, because it was, it's unlike, Disney is very corporate, and there's a lot of drama all the time, a lot of, like, corporate drama. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the few places that you would go in Disney and it actually was kind of what you think it's like on the outside, mm -hmm. you know, where it was magical and people were nice <laughs> and, you know, like, <laughs> it was just a different, it was a different, like, um, it was a special place. Mm -hmm. And those guys woke up every day, mm -hmm. we all did, with wanting to make the world a better place for kids and make this great place for kids to play and that was the total focus and you would be up there and we would have regular groups of school children come and we would have you know some kid with cancer who you know it's their dream to come to club picking and they get to come in and meet you know the team and meet me and all this mm -hmm. lame or whatever mm -hmm. and you know or we would get you know Tons and tons and tons of uh, fan art. You know, I mean, on the every weekend, I would get hundreds and hundreds of pieces of fan art on Twitter. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Spike, like, right? Yeah, just you used to spike. You used to place them as I your profile picture. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to yeah, always, I yeah. That That's so cool. Yeah. Um, I had people send me <coughs> um, spike hike plush they made. I had people, someone made. Oh wow. Lottery ceramic spike hype. That's so cool, man. Yeah. You know, I got to inspire a generation of kids mm -hmm. and talk to a lot of kids and, you know, uh, and then there was also kind of this other side that we don't talk about, that we never talk about. <laughs> much you know, a lot of kids on Club Penguin were, you know, there were a lot of kids who were, like, depressed, who um, were, oh, yeah. you know, who were, we had a lot of kids who would come on and, you know, uh, threaten to commit suicide or who, um, you know, would report that they were being sexually abused at home. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about working at Disney is they have this security team that when that stuff happens, mm -hmm. like, they know every legal authority in the world, blah, 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 blah. And we would send people out to their house, mm -hmm. um, law enforcement, to check on them. And... Sometimes they were just saying something online, but we found in more than one instance, like, those things were real. Like, either some kid was, you know, was, 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 you know, suicidal or something, mm -hmm. and we would intervene in those and save probably hundreds of lives, ri literally hundreds of lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we would, we gave millions of dollars of charity 
and build oh, yeah. school and playgrounds and libraries and things mm-hmm. that are there to this day. Yeah. In countries around the world, water wells. Um, we, you know, we didn't, you know, when you would vote in Coins for Change, you would vote for like, you know, making the world, you know, like taking care of kids' health or something like that. Yeah. But what, but what you guys didn't know is that that money would actually go to a charity like like helping children who were the victim women uh, girls who were the victim of uh, ritualistic rape in Africa oh wow you know mm-hmm. which were charities that no one would fund because they weren't um, because no one wants to be associated with something like that yeah like, at a corporate mm-hmm. level yeah but we would fund those charities uh to protect kids around the world because we had that mission yeah that's Um, really nice yeah and we would fund the things that other people wouldn't fund that needed to be funded to Mm -hmm. protect kids so you know out of you know i mean probably i would if i had to add it up in my head somewhere around 10 million dollars worth of charity that we did oh wow over the course of club penguin or maybe even i mean not counting I think when Lane and Lance and them sold the company, they made a big charitable invest- investment into the yeah. into a foundation. Mm-hmm. I'm just talking after that coins for change donations that Disney made. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, I mean, you know, it was, you know, to be, and then you know, my own kids were on it, right? Mm-hmm. And it was a part of their childhood. Yeah. And, you know, I've said this before, but Spike Hike was actually. The character that my son and I set up, my oldest son, to play. Oh yeah, I remember and you we, mentioned that in your like article when you joined the team. You had the blog post with when you were dressed like Herbert in one of the birthday parties. That was really cool. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That's, why I the <laughs> That's really nice. Um, because I did one for Charlie and then I think one for my twins. Mm-hmm. And one time my friend was Herbert and one time I was Herbert. <laughs> um, but... Um, the best one was the one where we had all these different, my wife came up with all these different, like, mm-hmm. penguin party games, and we had different, it was really fun. But Yeah, um, that's so cool. <laughs> but, you know, I played, um, you know, I mean, but my kids grew up on Club Penguin, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, my son is at USC now. Um, he's going into games. You know, he's going to be a game maker. <laughs> you know, his first big game that he played was Club Penguin. Mm-hmm. And... You know, he got to see, you know, and he and I were Spike Hike. Like, when he would go on, he would play Spike Hike. <laughs> I would watch him. But, you know, like, you know, my kids grew up with Club Penguin, and, you know, that was a big part of our family. You know, like, it'll always be part of our family. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and the, and some of the, and then a lot of those people are just special people that we work with in Kelowna that, you know, our, and, and, and the other studios, but, you know, especially in Kelowna, they're friends to this day, not just Lane, but, you know, Charity and Adam Semenek and Nicole Rustad and Emily Malik and, uh, you know, God, I mean, I could go on and on and on and <laughs> Troy Mack and, you know, a bunch of other people. Yeah. And, and, um, and, you know, so, I mean, it was one of the most positive experiences of my life, but that's mm-hmm. also why it hurt um, so bad when it when we didn't when we weren't able to save it because yeah I gave everything I had as a person yeah. everything I had and look the reason that I left Disney ultimately was I was not going to shut down Kelowna and I wasn't going to turn off turn off Club Penguin mm-hmm. and I knew that I could see the writing on the wall Disney was going to do it and I hand it and I was kind of um out of gas personally and mm. for other reasons also but you know yeah kind of the battle to keep club Penguin going was was a big one yeah and, and i uh handed it off to a guy named Carl laughlin who um was a good friend and had the right mentality and was always a fan of Kelowna mm. and had done the club Penguin christmas special and oh yeah, was, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, if Club Penguin has a chance, <coughs> it's gonna be with Kyle mm-hmm. as an executive. Mm-hmm. And it lasted, you know, he saw CPI through. It lasted another, you know, eighteen months after I left or something. Mm-hmm. But 
um, I just, I wasn't going to be the one, you know, I just couldn't, I didn't have the heart to do it, to turn it off. Or, yeah. You know, even to shut Classic down, you know, like I, I logged on that last night, um, you know, that, that Club Penguin went off and I just, I'll never forget kind of like me and my <laughs> son going to the last time and, you know, hopping around and it just, the feeling yeah. that, that everyone had, it was like, you know, it was surreal because it's mm-hmm. like, at one level, it's like, okay, we're grateful for everything we experienced. We're, like, kind of like, it's like graduating, I guess, of high school or something. Like, it's a part of your life where it's like, okay, this is coming to an end now. Mm. But it's also, like, really sad and apocalyptic because it's like, <laughs> yeah. turn this <coughs> off, mm-hmm. and it's gone. And I just remember the next day waking up and going to clubpenguin.com. Oh, yeah. And it not being there. Yeah. And just like um, they would redirect you to Club Penguin Island, and you would be, and I was like, oh my god, I don't want to play this game because I missed the original one. Yeah. Yeah. It it it, 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 it just breaks you, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I loved I loved. It was one of the best times of my life. I had some of the most fun I've ever had mm-hmm. with anyone I've ever worked with. We did some of the most creative things. We came up with great ideas. We did amazing art. Mm-hmm. We did. We had so much fun. We put this stuff up. It was mm-hmm. also one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Mm-hmm. Like it was all of that. It mm-hmm. was all of that. It was really fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't trade it. You know? <coughs> and and look, I mean, you know, part of what I'm, you know now that the metaverse is becoming a big thing and kind of you know working in that space like a lot of what i'm chasing is trying to bring back some of that ethos you know because i think what's missing in the world and a lot of the secret sauce because a lot lane and i've talked about this a lot a lot of people Mm -hmm. knocked off club penguin but no one ever knocked off the secret sauce they never knocked off the, the community and the energy yeah and the love that we had everyone else who did it was in it for the money ultimately <laughs> yeah that's so true <laughs> and we were in it for the kids and our families mm-hmm. and yeah for the love of the, for the love of it and, yeah and that um and you know there's a different when you're doing it for that reason you make different decisions and you do things differently and it comes through in the product and it's and it wasn't <coughs> just the game right that's the other thing people didn't get it wasn't just the game mm-hmm. it was the moderators it was customer service it was the way we listened to them yeah the way we the way we incorporated the community's feedback into everything we did mm-hmm. the way that you know the kids were like the center of everything we did as a business <clears throat> it wasn't just it was real yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. a lot of people ask me, like, was it real, you know? <laughs> or were you guys just like, you know, just yeah, claiming just, like, sitting there? Yeah. And it was real. Yeah. For a time it was real. You know, it was like Camelot, it was like the Arthur myth where it was like, you know, Camelot only existed for a period of time. But when it existed it was, you know, it was a pure thing. And I think Club Penguin was like that. And yeah. um and we all experienced something together that mm. changed our lives. Right? Yeah. It was mm-hmm. still, look, we're still talking about it. I mean, it's been gone almost a decade. Yeah. And we're and we're still here yeah. talking about it. <laughs> we're still talking you about it. Uh, yeah. You're grown up. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so strange. Like, we're still talking about it. Um, many people are still tweeting about it. There are Discord servers about it. There are, like, essays being made. Even successor games like Party Parrot and Box Critters and stuff. So, yeah. So, I logged on, mm. I logged on to the, uh, I guess, in the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I logged in when Club Penguin was um, one of the knockoff, one of the pirate sites was doing, there were, there were two of them, one of them was doing really well, and I got the guys who oh, okay. to give me my, to give me Spike Hike back. <laughs> um, was it, I logged in and was it the server that shut down recently and you tweeted about it? Was it that same one, Club Penguin Rewritten, or was it the other one? 
Or you have no. I can't remember. I can't. I can't oh, remember. There were two, and they were very similar. But I got yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. them to give me. I said, "Hey, <laughs> um, I want to, um, I want to log into uh, your. So I like what you guys are doing, and, and like a lot of people, like there were articles coming out about all these people in Club Penguin, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is wild." And yeah, I was like, I'm gonna go back on and do a Spike Saturday. So <laughs> I got my penguin back uh, on their service. Oh yeah, you did. I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. And I did a Spike Saturday. And yeah. It was like, at one level, I was so out of practice because I used to have like my whole thing down where like mm-hmm. um, I knew how to orient the screen in a certain way and <laughs> do the postcards so that I could do people's postcards and all this mm-hmm. and. And I was so out of practice, <laughs> but but I got back into it, right? And mm-hmm. but I went and did it, and I played for about an hour with the, with the audience, mm-hmm. and I got off, and it was just like it was like I had that feeling again, you know? Like it yeah, was, it was um, it was a re- it was really great to be able to do that. Then you know I found out like one of those sites, not the one that I had logged into, but another one. Oh yeah, some like they were using it to groom kids. And oh yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah. you know, like, uh, I guess they got shut down. Yeah. The one that I had done the thing one. Also shut down. down. Yeah. Because they were able to say to the other one, they were able to say, well, look what happens when we don't. Yeah. Um, when we let you guys just do this, you, you know, like, we can't, we don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. And so they wound up shutting the good one down or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure there's more to the story that I even know, but I was kind of like, oh, that sucks. That's yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. But, you know, the thing that I said <coughs> to Lane during that time was, I was like, dude, everything that we ever said to Disney is happening right now. I was like, today, mm-hmm. right now, during the pandemic, Disneyland is closed. And every Disney park in the world is closed. Oh, yeah. And Club Penguin, which they shut down years and years ago, is super alive. Open, yeah, is open and has more people playing it than ever before. Yeah, that's so I true. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. that is amazing. And mm-hmm. it says what we tried to say about the power of these virtual worlds. Because mm-hmm. the other thing, and this is a little bit of a of a of a, of a you want to be a giveaway of big secret, but um, yeah. oh, that would be cool. <laughs> we. So Lane and I were one other thing that was a big part of the story that kind of has never been told is that we were working on a virtual Disneyland. We were working on like a Disney theme park, mm-hmm. um, uh, and it was going to be called Imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was going, and Club Penguin was going to become a part of it. So it was going to be like imagine like Disney World like but uh but with club penguin is one of the lands within it mm-hmm. and that project ultimately got shut down when penguin started having some of its troubles and other things mm-hmm. um i also think it was like you know for all the technology stuff that i told you like it was way it was the wrong time to build that <laughs> blah blah and now disney uh, has a head of the metaverse and i think that they wind up building finally building like a real online disneyland you <laughs> see but yeah. you know, Lane and I were talking like, man, if we had built imagination, can you imagine that today during the pandemic that Oh yeah. I'm like, this pl- this would be the only Disney park open and it would be have a more people yeah. I was like, it would be crushed. It would be crushed. It would be the biggest game in the world right now. That's so true, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know. So <laughs> anyway, I mean uh during the pandemic, I remember even Lance tweeted that uh, probably some higher up at Disney was like regretting not keeping the game alive because of how much profit they would have made during the pandemic. So yeah. There's a lot of executives that, former very high up executives that have admitted uh, that they should have kept up. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, and I remember. A lot of the ones who yeah. pushed to shut it down have later said it was a mistake. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I tried to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember even like in 2018, 2018, like uh, 
two months before the before CPI was announced to be shutting down, uh, the team announced that Disney allowed them four more years, and they were celebrating we're gonna last till 2022. But then immediately the next day, it was decided the game was gone. So it was a shock to the Club Penguin Island team. Like they were promised four more years, but then suddenly they were told, okay, never mind, guys, it's closing in two months. So yeah. That tells you how long promises last. <laughs> that's why you <laughs> that's <laughs> that's like unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately in Hollywood uh, I've learned the hard way that uh, there's no such thing as a promise <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah well uh, Chris um, as much as I'd love to like spend hours in this conversation um, since we might only be able to continue for 20 more minutes I think yeah. so I'm gonna ask you like a couple of questions let's say 20 questions if you could just quickly give brief answers like yeah, pop, 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 yeah. like that okay so for example Ali Nol was asking what was CP Next's progress when it was cancelled so what was CP Next exactly at one point you CP called Next it yeah place and, okay. um, we got it onto the phone mm -hmm. uh, and we got a bunch of rooms built in it, into it it had a bunch of the mini games that we built C++ and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did Cards of Two Snow, and that's, okay. that's as far as we got with it. Okay, and um, okay, we covered the CPI questions. There was okay. So Alenol once again asks a good question, something you tweeted about like a year ago. What happened to the three D card Jitsu mobile app? So that was one of the C plus plus games. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that really that that was crazy mm -hmm. um, that we didn't launch that, and I. Mm -hmm. Frustrated because we had those animations were very expensive to make, and also we had our best animator do them, and they were freaking awesome. Yeah, they do. And <laughs> we were almost done with that game, mm -hmm. um, and then the funding for it got pulled because um, we had to lay some people off. And so, yeah, um, I was like, why can't we re reuse all these animations, guys? Like, we spent all this money. Like, come on, let's launch Card Two. Because I really think if we had launched Card Jitsu on mobile, Card Jitsu was one of the biggest games. Like it, we never got a lot of the big games mm -hmm. on the mobile. That's another thing. Actually, yeah. Uh, Card Jitsu <laughs> being one of them, and if we had ever gotten Card Jitsu on the mobile, I think it would have made a big difference. We yeah. actually made two different attempts. There was one attempt, and I saw it in your questions, there was one attempt mm -hmm. in the kind of like 2011, 2012 era yeah. where we had a third party developer making it and it was costing a, it was costing way too much mm -hmm. we ran out of budget and had to kill it had to put uh -huh. the money back into I think it was Puffle Launch uh, Puffle, Puffle Launch yeah Puffle Launch um, yeah. So we only had money to finish once so we finished Puffle Launch which was further along mm -hmm. and um, then we did the, the 3D version which would have been so awesome yeah and <laughs> it was great and also because they were 3D avatars we could change their costumes yeah so they could be in full costume and mm -hmm. it never happened but mm. this was one of my other frustrations with CPI by the way okay. which was they changed the damn penguin <laughs> and what made me crazy about that is mm -hmm. we had just redesigned the penguin for um, for, for CP Next for Metaplace yeah and we had spent all this money on outfits and 3D and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it was like, well, we think we can make a better <laughs> you know, you have to start over yeah. with all that animation. You're mm -hmm. going to have to redo all that stuff. We can't, we can't reuse all this stuff. They were like, no, it's going to require, like, they gave me some technical answer around, well, it's going to cost, you know, a bunch of money to port it from whatever thing I was in to mm -hmm. Unity, and we might as well just start over. Yeah. I, I don't think that's true. But anyway, like, <laughs> <laughs> like that when when we started over with the new penguin for CPI, mm -hmm. that's when all that stuff went out the window, which was really sad because it was freaking awesome. Yeah. I also mm -hmm. swear that one of the things <laughs> I have like, ideas in the back of my head of things I want to make mm -hmm. one day. <laughs> I like if somebody doesn't do it, I'm gonna do <laughs> a car jitsu inspired game. At some point <laughs> for Web three, like I think that would be so cool. Was yeah, genius. Mm -hmm. I think it was genius, and um, and there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. it was super fun. Yeah, and um, because everything else that's battle is like just it doesn't have that sense of humor. And <laughs> so I'm 
you know, that's one of the things I've thought about doing. Is like doing a card jitsu esque yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be fun. Mm-hmm. So how come on the original Club Penguin, um, you guys decided that rather than releasing Cardiusu Shadow, you would be focusing on transforming original Cardiusu into 3D? Like, how, why was that the preferred decision? Why didn't you guys finish the saga by releasing Shadow, and then you could renovate all you want? Do you have any idea? Um, so Cardiusu each Cardiusu kind of got less playership. So oh wow. Like, yeah. the one that was always the most <coughs> popular was Cartoon 2. Okay. Regular Cartoon 2. Mm-hmm. Then, like, Fire and Water kind of were not as popular. And then Snow was actually more popular than Fire and Water. Okay. Um, when it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the... <laughs> um, uh, but it was more popular. And then... Um, and then... Uh... And so the one that was like more popular than all of them was Cartoon's main Cartoon's. So uh, we yeah. were trying to figure out what do we do on. <coughs> we had already done Snow, right? Yeah. And so we were like, well, we're going to do Snow, and then it'll be the first game that like works on mobile and on mm-hmm. desktop with the same technology. Yep. But Snow did well, and it did better better than Fire and Water, but it wasn't as good as. Um, but it wasn't as popular as Card Jitsu by a lot, and so we wanted to get Card Jitsu over the mobile. Mm-hmm. That was one of the reasons. Shadow, we couldn't agree. I also remember we just had like lots of, we couldn't agree on what it was. Okay. The version I wanted to do mm-hmm. was based on a board game that uh, one of the toy designers that had worked for me in toys came up with, mm-hmm. which was a. Um, the idea was, if you ever see the Bruce Lee movie, I think it's called Tower of Death, mm-hmm. where Bruce Lee fights his way up this pagoda type thing, yeah. and each floor has a different boss, yeah. and like one is like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the basketball player, and then he just goes up and up until he beats like the guy at the top. So we had this board game, this 3D board game that we had built, where you could go, where where it was multiplayer, and it was kind of like, I don't know, like Candyland or something, where you would go around, and then when you ran into another player, you would play a hand of card jitsu. Mm. And then, and then, and then, so you would have to battle, it was like a tower climbing game, yeah. and as you climbed the tower, you would run into other players <coughs> and play them in a quick hand of card jitsu, and then... You would have to play bosses at each each level to like mm. get ascend to the next level. That's so cool. So that was really so that was I thought that was a really cool idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there were other ideas. Everybody had an idea for what they wanted to do, and like you know, like part of the thing was like we just had so much else on our hands we couldn't agree. So. Mm. And uh, a very related question is, uh, there was an interview with Chris Glidden and Paulo Field like a year ago, where he, as part of the interview, he mentioned how there were three flagships of Club Penguin, the Puffles, the Spies, and the Ninjas, and that you guys had to decide every now and then where to direct your attention, sometimes to Puffles, sometimes to Spies, sometimes to Ninjas. So the question here is, um, in 2014, for whatever reason, you guys decided to go really hard on Puffles. We had like, what, 16 in Puffles? Puffles, like dinosaurs, ghosts, um, cat, dog, etc. So the question is, why did you guys go so hard on one of the three flagships while leaving ninjas and more importantly spies to essentially die? Like, what was the idea? Yeah, um, so mm-hmm. Puffles were the most <coughs> popular of the three, mm-hmm. um, first of all, mm-hmm. by a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the second was Puffles were the easiest to do Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like introducing new types of puffles we probably overdid it I mean (laughs) we like we would do a color a new color a year and then suddenly like 16 yeah and and like you added a puffle park and you added puffle abilities it was a big year for puffles yeah (laughs) it was a big year for puffles puffles were very popular yeah part of it was that we were going to do the um, the Puffle uh, Puffle Wild Match game, mm-hmm. and the idea for that game was you need to collect lots of puffles. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Thought, well, um, but Puffle <coughs> kind of never 
took off the way that we it was a good game mm -hmm. fun, mm -hmm. but we just found that match three was kind of too much for <laughs> um for that audience that they just weren't into match three games as much mm -hmm. um but it was a really it was a really good game um so you know, so players of club penguin weren't into puffle wild or was there too much competition already like candy crush and such like more club penguin players were okay, huge, okay. Huge. I, I think we also hoped that we would bring in more players but yeah it didn't um mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh um Karjitsu, the answer was every time we did something with Karjitsu, we needed to add a new game, and then that was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like a six month, nine month, maybe a year project. So it was just, it was huge. But we did add Snow, and that was a bit, so we did serve that pillar. Mm -hmm. Spies, we did Operation Blackout as the idea to um, reboot Spies because basically we'd done the PSAs. Mm -hmm. and Long before I got involved, they kind of abandoned the the EPF or the or the um, the, P, the PSA. Yeah. Um, they had abandoned it because they couldn't afford to mm -hmm. making them because they were just so labor intensive. Yeah. So then they switched over to the EPF, which was kind of never fully implemented. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, well, we need to redo we need to get the quest system or whatever that will allow us to do these you know do these procedural quests or whatever that that will allow us to do the spy thing all over and the idea was all over the map right yeah um so we wanted people in every room playing spies you know yeah um, but we just kind of technologically and all the other things that were going on we just kind of never got to it mm -hmm. but the Bla Operation Blackout was supposed to be kind of the wipe the slate, slate clean. Now we can start over. And yeah. It was never for various reasons got to start over. Mm -hmm. um, you got Operation it. Blackout. Yeah. Uh, no, I was I was gonna say yeah. Uh, you guys sort of tried in the sense that in 2013 we had Operation Hot Sauce and then Operation Puffle, yeah. but unfortunately yeah. after these two it's just like nothing happened except for a small UFO event if you remember. <laughs> we served those, yeah, we served those, we served that pillar by doing those parties, but they were just parties, and it's, yeah. like, we were trying to do this thing where, like, maybe what we do is once a quarter, we do a really big party, mm -hmm. we do, like, two smaller parties, and then we do a bigger party, and that bigger party has a feature, yeah. and the feature, and the party introduces the feature, and the feature is the thing that, like, stays around, Yeah, and that's what we were trying to do, but I don't think we quite got there. Yeah, um, there were also a lot of people wondering about the beta team, beta, beta, beta team. Um, do you, if you remember, yeah, exactly. If you remember, there was that feature where we could uh, test games for you guys and give you feedback. The last time uh, we had anything to do with that was in May 2013 or before when we were testing Karjitsu Snow. So the question was, what happened to that? Why did you guys decide to just kill it essentially? <laughs> and much more. And much more importantly, just if I could get this, and people were wondering how come we tested a lot of games on that feature that never made it into the final game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, beta team was being used heavily before I got there. Mm -hmm. um, I seem to remember most of the things we tried on there were that didn't make it were things that people that just weren't as popular um mm -hmm. the there was something that we did on beta team that was huge that came off of there i just can't remember what it was the, the, there was uh, at the chat suggestion thingy yeah. maybe that's it there yeah. were yeah like when you type you had like a, a yeah yeah phrase chat yeah yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. there were a couple big things that came out of there but we um we never used it enough. I think part of it was that it was hard mm -hmm. to it was hard to do because it required us to uh, do a separate deploy basically of Club Penguin mm -hmm. that was out of date with the main Club Penguin. <coughs> and because of the technology issues, it was we basically had to launch like a parallel Club Penguin in order to like a full stack. Yeah. Uh, everything and it was a lot they were very expensive to do and so we would only do it for like really big things like 
hard to do snow, and mm -hmm. it was just it was it was meant to be this experimental playground, but it wound up being too hard to do. Yeah, with the, it took too much staff time. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, um, one of one of the things that people wondered about takeovers. Many people used to, at, many people used to say that they were advertisements and so forth. And you've addressed that so many times before. You've mentioned that it would be a crime not to use these Disney products, and that they would actually bring in audiences, and it would be really fun to use Star Wars and Marvel. However, there was this one specific question, which is that we understand that logic in terms of Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, Frozen, Dory, the really popular internationally recognized brands. But then again, you guys decided to. Have have a party with like Disney radio singers so it was strange because they weren't internationally recognized S most of them were females so like you guys appealed to one of the genders and what made it even more funny was one of the singers was Spanish so she even sang in Spanish on English servers so it was an interesting mix-up of decisions so what happened there <laughs> <laughs> I barely remember that one, uh, the Radio Disney thing. Yeah. I mean, Radio Disney was big for a while, and it was really big in Latin America, so I think... <coughs> Spanish was our second biggest language, <laughs> and we had a huge... Um, uh, we had a huge Spanish language... Uh, Spain was one of our biggest countries, mm -hmm. and then Mexico uh, was another huge one, and then we had a few, you know, like Argentina and a few other countries that were really big, spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was, um, and then we had Brazil, which was Portuguese, mm -hmm. and um, so there was pressure from those markets to start doing things mm -hmm. that recognized those markets and that they could do local, you know, they wanted to do local events, which would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. We just weren't set up to do it. So we tried to work it into some of those parties. Um, <laughs> and, you know, celebrate the like. There was a time period where we were doing some things with mods where, like, we would let, like, the Australia people be the spokespeople for, like, one party and the UK people be the spokespeople for mm -hmm. another. Or yeah. we were trying to, like, uh, emphasize the global that you're part of this global penguin community mm -hmm. and leverage the fact that we had these moderation groups in all these different places and then at some point it became too expensive to do that and then we consolidated all the moderation back into Kelowna and LA mm -hmm. um, and that kind of went away but that that was um, that was kind of part of it was trying to you know try some things to support these local markets mm -hmm. um, and Radio Disney was frankly huge in some of those ter territories <laughs> it was a smaller event that was like a thing it was a music I, jam in 2014 like it was a cruise ship if you remember right yeah yes I remember yeah I remember the cruise ship yeah I mean but remember to get on Disney Channel they wouldn't let us they wouldn't put us on Disney Channel if there wasn't a tie-in okay yeah Disney. okay so all of those things that like had some Disney tie-in, a mm -hmm. lot of it was to get support from the Disney mm -hmm. channel. So you guys... So, so the other qu another question that's very related to something you just brought up. So we thought that since you guys were owned by Disney, you would easily be able to be literally shoved on our faces, like on the screen. Was that not the case? Like, couldn't they advertise Club Penguin 24-7? Like, it's our number one game, guys, get on it. Like, why was that not the case? That's the question. Well, because you're competing with everything, because they have a limited, first of all, they were non-commercial, right? Yeah. So they didn't have commercial time, they only had these synergy spots they would do. Mm -hmm. And there's a limited number of hours in a day that they're allowed to do them, or that they can do them, right? Because they have the regular programming. Mm -hmm. So you're competing with every other priority in the company. Mm -hmm. So if a big, you know, movie like Pirates of the Caribbean, or the next Pixar <coughs> movie, or whatever comes out, mm -hmm. you're going to get blown off TV, and the only way to to get into that corridor is like if they're promoting Frozen mm -hmm. you need to be promoting Frozen because if you're doing yeah. something else mm -hmm. then 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 it's Frozen month and we're just talking about Frozen as a company mm -hmm. so Club Penguin needs to be talking about Frozen if it wants any promotion because mm -hmm. that's all we're talking about right yep. and, mm -hmm. and we're not going to talk about Club Penguins you know <laughs> uh, you 
you know, high school party or whatever yeah. because because that has nothing to do with Frozen this month. Yeah. So a lot of that was done to leverage synergy support mm -hmm. the company for free marketing. Mm -hmm. And the last question we have is, uh, do you have anything at all that you could mention, anything at all regarding Rockhopper's Island? There were like three parties where you could you guys could have done something, but you guys didn't. Like when we went inside his brain and stuff like that, you were against Side Out, for example. So how come we never got that mystery? So we literally got every other mystery, like the director's identity, Rainbow Buffle, Gold Buffle, Tipping the Iceberg, but never Rockhopper's Island. <laughs> so do you have anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about the mysteries is, so that was actually a big, like, hustle <laughs> yeah. that I had with, with, in particular, Charity and I wrestled over <laughs> Rainbow Couple because I was like, kids have all these things that they want to want to see us do. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just do it. Let's go there. Yeah. You know, like... And Club Penguin was kind of in decline, and I was like, what are we waiting for, guys? Like, mm -hmm. we all know if we put out <laughs> Rainbow Buffle, the servers are going to crash. And that's what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. And there were a lot of people who were like, let's, like, hold on, wait a second, like, we need to hold that back. Mm -hmm. like, I'm like the president, let's go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, um, then we got into a moment of, like, okay, so what are all the things that the kids want? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Operation Blackout was born out of that. Mm -hmm. Buffalo was born out of that. Mm -hmm. Buffalo was born out of that. A lot of those mm -hmm. were kind of wish fulfillment for the audience. Yeah. Flipping the iceberg was one of those. Mm -hmm. um, although I was involved in that. Um, yeah. The I think it would have been cool if you had flipped the iceberg. And <laughs> that had been in in my perfect world. Yeah. <laughs> you flipped the iceberg and it allowed you to install 3D Club Penguin and it had just been like oh, wow. the whole world again in 3D. That's what I think would be cool. Yeah, that would be really amazing. Yeah. Is the, is the end of Club Penguin, mm -hmm. of 2D Club Penguin would have been, we're 3D now, <laughs> and that would have been dope. But, yeah. um, but I wasn't involved in that. Mm -hmm. I was gone by then. But um, the... Uh, The Rockhopper's Island, I barely remember. <laughs> I remember there was a design mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. But it was another, another one. I remember there was a design for it. I also remember that there was a big debate around the um, holiday party where we did the tie in with the Shoe and Mary Wallace. Yeah. And we were like, should we go to Rockhopper's Island during that? Oh, and wow. We were like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to the Walrus's Island instead. Blah, blah, blah. But we never went to either. <laughs> but we never went to Island either. And so, but I remember we were having a big debate about that. Mm -hmm. We had a design at one point for Rockhopper's Island. I can vaguely see it in my head. Mm -hmm. Anything special about it that you remember? Like, was there something eye-catchy or it wasn't just normal i seem to remember kind of a treehouse type thing that was sort of like inspired yeah. by the mm -hmm. um by the um tarzan's treehouse it used to be um swiss family robinson at disneyland oh wow like very kind of like rube goldberg uh lots of little mechanisms and moving things and like yeah. dimensions with coconuts and whatever so i seem to remember i seem to remember something like that Mm -hmm. But I think this is another example of we couldn't agree on what it was. <laughs> Just like with Shadow. <laughs> Just like with Cardusa Shadow, it yeah. Like, it was like, it was too big. I think, here's, I seem to recall now. Mm -hmm. It was, we had a design, but we were like, this isn't awesome enough. Yeah, makes sense, yeah. So, let's not <laughs> do it now. Let's mm -hmm. wait and do it later and make it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, but yeah, that would have been cool. So, like, the only two mysteries that were never revealed, Shadow and Rockhopper's Island, were because you guys couldn't agree on how to make them epic enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, mm -hmm. that's right. Or didn't have the resources. Yeah, the yeah. So, uh, Chris, it has been a pleasure. Do you have a second to squeeze in a final question, or is it too much? Yeah, I can do one last one. Yeah. 
Okay, so there's this one question that I myself really wanted to ask and many people wanted to know How did many of the Club Penguin bloggers like, not train men, but there was Raid, Ryan and Pop11 and a couple of them How did they go to this Club Penguin HQ? Could, could I have just emailed you guys to support I wanna be there next week and you'd be like, cool, come over? Or was it a more like, or did you guys pick who would come? Like, how was it, the process? <laughs> so they would reach out to us either through customer support mm -hmm. or, um, or through PR mm -hmm. sometimes uh, community so it would come to us a couple different ways <coughs> sometimes through HR if it was like a kid who um, or like the or like the, the charitable team like if it was a kid who you know had cancer and was in make a wish or something mm -hmm. like we would get them through there and um our kind of HR slash community team, or our like internal community, not the community, not the external, but like we had an internal, the HR team, Lindy Albert, uh, Lindy Albert Anson, I forget what we called the, her function, but she was like, <laughs> the tour guide, community mo internal community mom, and she was responsible okay. for like, mm -hmm. you know, like all the parties we had internally, mm -hmm. and all the events and all these things, and so she would, um, she had been in HR for a time and then we kind of put her in this culture building role and so she would coordinate a lot of that and do a lot of that and she was really great because she's a very warm mm -hmm. personality and, um, so we would arrange those tours I mean we would accommodate as many of them as we could mm -hmm. as we could like I don't think we ever told anyone like like no like like you just can't because you're not important enough or something like mm -hmm. it was very against the Club Penguin ethos to do that. Like, mm -hmm. if a kid wanted to come see Club Penguin, unless we just <coughs> couldn't possibly arrange it, we would try. So, mm -hmm. if you had called and if you had <laughs> been in Kelowna... I mean, because, you know, the other thing is, like, it's hard to get to. Yeah. Like, and mm -hmm. to get there, you have to fly on this little jet that, like, goes over the mountains, and it's, like, Fantasy Island, where, like... Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, it's like lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's bumpy, and you think you're gonna die, like you're gonna crash, and then, and then like every time, <laughs> and then, and then you, and then like you land, and then you go through the clouds. It's like this beautiful. Thing. <laughs> and then you see Club Penguin, basically, like the island. It's literally in another dimension. Yeah. And it's and it's and so like, it, but it's expensive to get there. So if yeah. somebody was willing to pay to get there. It's not, it would have been different if we had been in Vancouver and like people could just come by like all the time, Yeah. you know, and, and, and we just couldn't accommodate it, but <laughs> it was so hard and expensive to get to that like if somebody was willing to go all that way, yeah. like how can you say no? Yeah. It's like if you were one, if you went that far, might as well you just drop by, I guess. Yeah. And then yeah. I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to walk you around and let you look at stuff and take some pictures mm -hmm. and say hi to somebody and they're thrilled to see you because because it's always a pleasure to meet the kids mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's yeah. like it really wasn't that much of a burden to do yeah so yeah well chris this concludes our fun talk honestly it was really very fun we had a lot of laughs we had a lot of serious parts it was really fun it was really enjoyable i hope you enjoyed it as well and yeah i did i did, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i hope you got i hope you got what you wanted and the audience got some answers yeah it was really fun yeah and uh, yeah i would like to thank you so much and i'll let you have the final words please go ahead i just you know i hope mm -hmm. you know i love the <coughs> when i still love the audience i you know one day I hope we find a way to bring it back uh, mm -hmm. you know I think Lane and I would both like that uh, mm -hmm. and Lance you know whether we're involved or not we'd like to see it happen I think it will happen one day mm -hmm. um, but you know yeah I mean and I hope I wasn't too negative <laughs> because I did <laughs> no, I no. you guys all the <laughs> problems behind the scenes but mm -hmm. you know there were, there were a lot of great times mm -hmm. and thank you again for being a part of my life and my kids life and letting us you know be a part of that it was really special and you know i'm really proud of the generation that you guys have become and <laughs> you know you're still out there with your club penguin icons i see some of you in web3 every now and then um you know so mm -hmm. you know hopefully we'll meet again in the metaverse but yeah uh, <laughs> it's been great talking to you guys
Mm. Thank you so much for all you've done, and yeah, we'll catch you next time. All right. Hey, and waddle on. Waddle on. See you, Chris. <laughs>